Go ahead. Now, what game are we playing? The nickname game. This is too easy. Go ahead. She calls him my love, which he hates. Mm -hmm. And he calls her baby girl. Oh, that's Ronnie. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, no. <laughs> she, he's being literal. I don't know. But I love that, that he hates that I she... think, hey, he doesn't know her name, and he thinks she's a baby girl. <laughs> but she says she calls him my love, and he hates that. I don't know. Why would he hate that? Because he's ill, and his thought process is so paranoid and jumbled that it's almost criminal. Like, he went berserk yesterday because, right? I bet you he had a fight with her last Oh, night. you should go to the wrap-up show, Howard. Yeah. Him and Lieberman really... He, he, I thought... I couldn't tell, but... He's very upset with Lieberman. In his mind, Lieberman has crossed a line yeah, because he talks to his, he Ronnie, talks to his girlfriend. Ronnie, he is the Taliban. No, Ronnie should have been like one of like a um, like a mafia guy. That's how they think. They make these leaps. He broke the, in fact, Ronnie's exact words were Lieberman broke the man code. Ronnie doesn't know anything about there the man no code. There is no man code. It's the Ronnie code. Right. Where is that? Gary Page right? 2. Yeah. Ronnie's thought process is so jumbled that sometimes I have to sit him down it, and actually Can you really call it a thought process? <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> what page? I mean, what, uh, Ronnie, there's a bunch of Ronnie. Which one? Uh, let me see. Three, four, or five. John? Ronnie thinks Lieberman wants to bang Stephanie. Well, you can play them all. That's, start all right. with that one. Should John have come to you and said, Ronnie, I want to let you know Stephanie and I talk, and these are some of the, the topics we discuss. He shouldn't be, you know, there's no reason for my, you know, me to be in his mouth with my girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? Wait, it, that's like, you've spoken to my girlfriend about me before, correct? No, she spoke to me about you. Well, you I spoke bring, it together. I didn't, I didn't bring it up. It's like arguing with a plant. <laughs> there's no arguing with him. His thought process is so paranoid. You know, whenever we do the psychological test, Ronnie's almost like a mass murderer. What, what, what did they say about him? Well, they always say he's paranoid. Paranoid, and it's just weird, his whole thought. Like, like what did John do? Talk to his girlfriend? Yeah, it, it seemed to me like to not be a big deal. Like, they had a discussion. Oh, I guarantee you, Ronnie went home and started one of his freaky thought processes with that girlfriend. Well, I think there was probably, somebody got a talking to last night, is yeah. my guess, and it wasn't pleasant. If, it's lu if, he's lu if she's lucky, Ronnie was so rude to her that she'll leave him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring it up. I didn't she bring brought, it up either. We were chatting. It yeah, comes chatting. up. Yeah. You made it pretty clear how you wanted to fuck her a long time ago anyway when you were drunk, so let's let's get that clear. What? Let's get that on, on out on the table. I mean, you want to go there. We'll go there. Go, go there. Go. Where are we going? That's, a, that's an expression Ronnie heard. I forget who used to say, you want to go there, we'll go there. But all this is like what Ronnie hears guys saying. Yeah, it's almost, now that I'm listening to it, it is like talking to the Godfather. Yeah, yeah. That's a big wrap-up show thing, by the way. You want to go down that road? You yeah. want to go down that road? Yeah, and yeah. no one ever does. Right. No, it's clear. I mean, it was clear. It's not clear. Yeah, okay, it's very clear, but okay. I can't be friendly with your girlfriend? I didn't say that. There's nothing wrong and with it. And I've been nothing but nice to your girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Correct? Yeah, sure. No, correct. Correct. Tell the group. Sure. No, yeah, you want to go there? Tell the group. I'm telling I've you. helped her no. with some opportunities. I've right. been very nice to yeah. her. And it's not because I want to sleep with her. Okay. All right. But Whatever you say. Clip four is the one to go with. He's, uh, this is where Ronnie really lets him have it. This is where they go there? Well, you know, Ronnie, well, Ronnie calls him a bunch of names. Oh. You're so infatuated with me and what's going on with my life, I guess, that you have to know what's yeah, going I'm on. I'm infatuated you know? with you. I'm making Dad, you small have to sit talk there, small with your talk. girlfriend. No, I'm small Don't make small talk with uh, Ronnie or his girlfriend. Because Ronnie will misconstrue it. I know that about Ron. I love him, but he's, I know how to handle him. It's like, <laughs> Obviously, it's like, John Lieberman doesn't. No, no one really. You got to really spend time with Ronnie to know how to handle him. Talking about me behind my no, that's not being a reporter when you're out at a social event or or in a restaurant Small talking or, or a restaurant for me. You're not a fucking reporter, but obviously now I do know that you are a fucking reporter all the time, and I will not talk to you about certain things. Did you cross a line here, John? Absolutely not. My point about saying a, I'm a reporter you're a, you're a is fucking pussy. that we were... you're a fucking pussy by doing that. Okay? You break man code by doing shit like that. By talking like to your woman. girlfriend I at told, an event? Dude. Oh, my God. Jeez, How long did that, that go voice. on? Oh, a, that voice. A, a bit of time. A bit of time. Yeah. Why doesn't he calm down at that block party? I mean, he gets on the air. D don't put him on the air today and tomorrow. I mean, it, listen to that voice. Well, we were saying everybody went to the block party. Right. And he's the one who came back sounding like that. But oh, every weekend. Shuley said, Shuley said that, and I give Ronnie credit for this, because what is he, 60-something years old? Right. Shuley says he has endless energy. Yeah. And he, he says he just goes and never stops. Retard strength. And he just never stops. 
Yeah, but so, his voice does. <laughs> so did he go home and yell at his girlfriend? I don't know. Ronnie, you out here? Downstairs. Might be doing something. Yeah, avoiding you. <laughs> avoiding me. Ron, real quick, did you beat your girlfriend when you got home? You sh- what? Wait, wait a second. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I didn't beat my girlfriend. No? No. Everything all right on that front? Yeah. I found out Lieberman was, like, trying to get to my fucking head, supposedly. So you had to talk with her? No, I asked her what happened. Right. And she said she never re- never really said any of that shit to him, that he was fucking just trying to get to me. But, you know. And he did. He wants to be a washerwoman. It's okay with me. How did you discipline her? I didn't. <laughs> Stop it. I love he's the calm Ronnie. Calm Ronnie. No, I, I didn't. I thought you were all worked up. <laughs> what did Lieberman do wrong? He spoke to her. He spoke and... to her and she said that Ronnie's tired. <laughs> yeah, and it, that uh, she needs a younger guy. You know? Here, here's Lieberman. Yeah. Lieberman, I, I, Lieberman always said dude, he was speculating about the younger you, okay? guy. What is that? I'm done with him. I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> oh my He's an God. asshole. He really is what? an asshole. John, what did you do? I mean, what? what he did what he did yesterday is the stupidest thing ever. Did he trying, break the man trying from- to get trying to get to me like that, telling me lies like that. What it's lies like, did I tell you? She never said that, dude. She said on the air yesterday that no, she, she said that when she called in. No, she didn't. She didn't say that she said I was I was tired. Yes, she absolutely and that she did. A, Before, younger, a younger man, you fucking idiot. The younger man thing I was joking You're a about. You fucking I, idiot. Go play with your own girlfriend. Don't worry about mine, okay? You're well, don't call me a liar. I'm not a liar. a liar. And, you are and a fucking liar. don't call me any and more names. I don't appreciate you fucking on the wrap-up show I don't personally attacking me. That's right. Too bad, man. Don't attack me. How did I attack you? And you have you. Walk, You're even, blaming me out, for your dude, girlfriend. I go, I go out Howard, to dinner with this thing. guy. I go out know, to, wait a minute. But, I, go but out, I go out to dinner with this fucking asshole, yeah. and he's telling me how he's he's con- putting information together. He's a reporter, twenty four seven. What? Yeah, that's what he tells me. Ronnie, right? yeah. Ronnie, you're not smart enough to understand what I actually you're said. Fucking, I know you exactly take what, what I say said, and you misconstrue no, it. No, I know exactly what you said. Okay, uh, Howard, I'm, I'm not ga- going to have I'm this argument with Ronnie because it doesn't... I'm information. That's what you told me. Here's That's my job. He's making it like I filled out the form and said I wanted no. to sleep with Stephanie. He's angry. You're channeling no, your angry. anger toward me. Your girlfriend no, filled out... I'm your girlfriend you filled out the said, form. You fucking You're... lying, motherfucker. That's See, what I'm angry at. I don't call you names, do I'll I? I'll call you whatever I feel like fucking calling you. Oh, you will? Yeah, I will. You what will you not. do about it? What are you going to do about it? Oh, now you're threatening me? No, I asked you what you're going to do about it. You act like you're a two-year-old. You're a fucking idiot. Oh, I am? Yeah. How am I? How is he an I'll idiot? Put, wait, oh, you shit. think I'm an idiot? Yeah, I do. What right do you have to call I me an idiot? I can say whatever the fuck I want. Just oh, like you can? You can. Just like you can. I have never once right. called you a name, Ronnie. What? I have never once criticized your intelligence. Stay away from me. Show, show, away he's from been me. very, very cordial. I will talk you. to you in the course of my it. job. You, you, yeah, okay. you, you, you're, you're no, calling you talk to me in the course of my job. I your said, job? I said, I will talk to you Go, in at, the course of my re- job. At a fucking restaurant? That's your fucking job? That's not what we're talking no, about, that's Ronnie. What we are you talking said do not about. speak to you, and I said I have to speak to you in the course of my job to ask Good. you questions. Fine. And in fact, why don't well, you go you ask do anybody you out do there? That. You're you're belligerent to me on a daily basis out there you when I'm are. trying to I've ask you, you questions. I've not seen to that. mention bumping me in the hallway. Do you remember doing oh, that the other day? You. Yeah. Do you remember bumping. that? Oh, you can't take a little joking around now. All of a sudden, <laughs> you're Mr. now Mr. I fucking. can't take yeah. joking. Okay. All right. But Whatever. you can't take joking either. Yeah, I, I'm done with him. You can't Seriously. take joking either. Yeah, okay, I'm you done. You shouldn't be bumping people in I'm the done. hall. I'm done. And right. I love how I'm he done. takes off the headphones. I'm done. Yeah, I'm he's done. done. He takes off the I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> John, I'm not going down that road. <laughs> he's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. I'm well, he, the clock. He resorts to personal attacks. I'm an idiot. I'm, not a, I'm a washwoman. I'm not a fucking tough guy, okay? You sound like a tough guy. No, I don't, I don't fucking feel... What he did yesterday was fucking idiotic. I Can you explain? Did what no. did I do? You fucking lied. How? What did I lie what about? What you said. What? Well, you did say he was tired. Which is girl- true. She told me that, and she said on the air that. When we were talking, she said, Ronnie's been traveling around. This was a few months ago. Are we you went through try- this. Are you going to fuck Stephanie? No. All right, that's a ridiculous question. I'm, saying, I'm putting it all out there, man. You want to yeah. go there? I'll go there. Okay, let's go there. <laughs> you want to go there? Let's go down that road. Ronnie? Uh, what the there he goes what again. Road? Where are you? What road are you fucking going down? You want to go down that road? Huh? Huh? <laughs> I have nothing personal against you. Yeah, you do. But all you Obviously, do is call me Nate. jealous motherfucker. I'm jealous of you? No, not of me. Do you think he is jealous? Honestly. Well, why is he fucking on my case like that? For what? Well, how what am was I? The purpose? Well, he, what he, was the purpose? He was dragged into this when you're when you're. Yeah, okay, fine. 
That's fine, okay? Right. right. She picked it. She wrote it. I don't give a shit about that part of it. Okay. He doesn't have to be an asshole and say, oh, well, of course, she always tells me he want, she wants a younger man. Fuck he you, dude. He never said that. I'll run rings well, around you any day of the week. Okay, Ronnie. Okay? Can you fuck better than him, you think? Yeah, any day. Right. I'll fuck his girlfriend. She'll be standing. Her fucking hair will be standing up. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. talking about the hair that's on That's right. Are you I, about... If you want to be an asshole, I can be an asshole, too. You talking about the hair on her arms? Okay. Want to have a fuck contest? You want to be an you asshole? Too? I'll be an asshole. Ronnie, the difference is... <laughs> There is no difference. You step way over the line. Yeah, I And now you're talking about sleeping with my girlfriend? I never once said. How about a fuck contest? Seriously. <laughs> sure. Okay. Go ahead. Big shot. You fuck Stephanie. Bring it out. He'll fuck your girlfriend and see who fucks better. Then we're going to be back in here with a whole new... Well, let the girls decide. With a whole new problem. Let the girls yeah, decide who fucks better. Ronnie's confident in his fucking. One thing yeah, but know. Ronnie's never going to touch Stephanie again after he's been with John. She's been with John. No, you can't take it out on Stephanie because you're going to fuck his girlfriend. That's fine with me. Good. You're sure you can handle I, this? I would not subject my girlfriend to that torture. You guys going to wear <laughs> condoms for this? I would, I would no, suggest no, no condoms. No, no condoms? Absolutely I'm riding bare bare. None. Oh, my God. None. <laughs> I'm going in commando. That's right. Oh. Well, you, John, uh, Ronnie okay. says he's up for it. I'm not up for it, no. Not do it? No, this is the most r ludicrous thing I've ever heard. Especially because yesterday he's calling me a wash woman. I mean, this is the thing. Ronnie can't argue rationally, so he resorts to just name calling. So right. yesterday he called well, me idiot, wash woman, this that and that. That shows limited uh, arguing abilities. Right. Limited uh -huh. intelligence, I right. would say. Uh, okay. Right. Lim well, no, you don't John. have to call him names. Don't fucking hang out with me. Don't talk to me. Stay away from me. Okay, if I'm saying okay. Feel, I'm an idiot to you? That's fine. I did... Fuck you and the whole fucking deal. Wow. What deal? What does that mean? What, what deal? deal? That's what cryptic. Deal? What deal? He walks away after saying. <clears throat> you talk about the fuck contest is off. <laughs> He'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything you want to say, John? Now that you uh, are alone. <laughs> I think he just said it all. I think you see what we're dealing with. God bless you for dealing with him for the past 30 well, years. Well, does make a point. You did kind of uh, say that uh, Stephanie said he was tired. He says Stephanie didn't. But that is true, and she said it when she called in yesterday. Right. The whole, Howard. It was all based on all how right, much when you look traveling. Just quick, quickly, when you look at it rationally, right. she started going to these block parties with him right. to spend more time with him because she was never seeing him. And that was the whole which basis. Which is beautiful. He which is a good thing, and he right. took it, yeah. All she said to me was, I love Ronnie, but I'm not seeing him enough. Boom, boom, boom. That's all I said. And you and said, it, hey, he should spend more time with her. That's all I said. Right. And now he's but talking about... But he never, about ever, ever said that she said she wanted a younger man. It was always implied. She wants Ronnie. Clearly she wants Ronnie. What else, why else would she be so with him? Why is he him? so upset? That's my... Uh, she. He's upset because she wrote my name on that piece of paper. <laughs> and right. at the moment that she put that pen to that paper, his life changed forever. Oh, right. dear. <laughs> well, you know, this game is a very it's, scary game. It's what? a tough one. I guess she's attracted to you because you are a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Ronnie needs to listen more. Maybe I'll go give Ronnie some tips. <laughs> I'm sure that'll I'm sure that'll go over well in the hallway. I'm gonna go give Ronnie some listening tips. Let me ask you something, John. You and Ronnie get into these things all the time, yet obviously you're friends outside of here and you go to dinner together. You know, it's very strange, Robin. Actually, our relationship has been deteriorating lately because in the hallway, <laughs> really, in the hallway, I'll say good morning to him, just uh -huh. a cordial good morning, right. and he'll grunt. He or does he'll, that with everyone. He, and he, everyone. he gets into a shtick. Uh, yeah, it's like the minute he comes into this compound, he's like another man. He might as well shed his suit jacket and have a Superman on his, his chest or something. I think something. that's his personality. Uh, oh. Because outside of here, I really like him. Yeah. And he's nice, and we have, we've had nice conversations. But in here, he is like a monster. Well, the game, if anyone's keeping score, the game is uh, who, would, who would my woman have sex with? The game is one for one in fucking up relationships. So it's a good game, <laughs> right, Robin? It's a very good game. Absolutely. Fireworks every right. time the game is played. John, uh, good for you. Uh, playing the game well. Ronnie, can your relationship with Lieberman be restored? Where are you going? Ronnie, where are you going, man? Uh-oh. Oh, there's Jason.
What's the latest update? Ronnie just grabbed his coat and left. He left? What? Well, I left the compound. And there's <laughs> no guests about? today, so I don't, he didn't go downstairs to help anyone up or He's got to do security. I don't know where he went. I was like, where are you going? And he just... Wow. Mm. <laughs> and we have Why a bit in about 10 minutes. he get hot under the collar? Wow. Well, all right. He got hot under the collar. <laughs> Over nothing. <laughs> I'm not sure what they're fighting about. In the, in, the, in the spelling game, see if he can spell Lieberman. All right. All right, John. Well, I hope Ronnie's all right. Uh, he's <clears throat> fine, because nothing really happened. <laughs> yes. Am I good? John, the lines around here often get... Very, very blurry between reporter, friend, co-worker. Do you think Ronnie's confusing all these aspects? I just think, and I mean this, he is a different guy when he's in this compound. And when we're out of the compound, I thought we were friends outside of here. I really did. I thought we were friends or friendly. But lately, he's been a monster to deal with in here, and now he's calling me a liar, and he resorts to these personal attacks. I've never once attacked him personally. And so, yeah, things get blurred around here. And this time, though, it seems like it's gone too far. It's like I, I, don't, have the, I don't have the energy to deal with this kind of bullshit. I really don't, Greg. Why are you attacking Lieberman in this situation? What's, what's really irking you? What do you mean? Uh, what aspect of it? Because it seems, it seems you like... You made up lies, okay, to get to me, okay? That's why. Can your relationship with John be repaired? No, I'm with it. You don't need friends like him. I really don't care if you talk. I talk to him. I don't talk to him. I really don't give a shit. You know, he's all about work. Obviously, he says so. Uh, because when I when I confronted him about you know do you work twenty four seven? We went you know when you go out to dinner with me. Obviously, the conversations that you have with people, you know, are all news all the time. I guess you know. So. The microphone is never turned off no. in your opinion. He's gathering information. That was his answer to me. That's, that's not a friend. I'm sorry. Robin, I hold in my hand an envelope. And this envelope contains, I don't know, about 10 envelopes. Ronnie went crazy. John Lieberman and Ronnie not talking to each other. Did Ronnie ever return to the compound, or is he still missing? Is he still MIA? I, you know, I ran in here. I didn't see him come back yet. Wow. He's back. He's back? Where'd you go, Ron? I get my phone. What? Went to get my phone out of the car. Oh. I thought, like, John really got to you. <laughs> All right. Ronnie and John went at it after this game yesterday. I, I don't know if I can. If we'll see the same fireworks. No, I think most of the people will have more of a sense of humor than Ronnie. All right. I'm holding in my hand the envelope. Let's see who it is. Jason. Anybody care about Jason Kaplan or should I just rip this up? I care. Do you care who Jason's <laughs> wife would fuck? I don't. I, I sort of do. All right. I, I also care who she wouldn't fuck. Do you want Jason to come in? Uh, yeah. You know, I meant to tell you yesterday, we probably should have the wives on the phone when we do this. Wouldn't that be better? Uh, okay. You know what I mean? I mean... Boom, boom. All right, I'll get her on, I'll get her on right now. Nah. It's just we never know when we're going to do it and everybody's wife is available at a different time. Right. Come on in. Do we care who your wife's going to fuck? I kind of I so don't care who your wife would want to fuck. Dude, it's, I only played this game because Sal handed me the envelope. It's who do you think you. she wants to fuck? Well, I I think she likes, and there's somebody you don't really know that well, but Rob the Cameraman. Yeah. Rob Martin, because I had a party a few months ago. and Yeah, that'll suck because nobody knows Rob the Cameraman. Yeah. I, but I don't know if that's know. true. Right. That, that, that's my guess. Who is she most likely not to fuck? And I hope it's not you. Oh, I... Th <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> Probably. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's Ronnie. Ronnie? Uh, she is so... She never... She listens to the show, but she never bothers me about it or texts me or anything like that. And when right. Ronnie was doing his washing his ass out in the sink thing, yeah. I got like... She's like, never have him over the house. It's gross. It's, yeah, it's, a lot it's, of women <laughs> do think Ronnie's gross. And, and Sal would be my backup on that. Cause, okay. Even though she likes Sal a lot. She would not want to fuck him. No. I All don't right. think so. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were right about least wanting to fuck. Ronnie. Ronnie. Yeah, she's grossed out by it. Yeah, most women are. No, and I I think she likes him as a person, but... Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> not let's be honest. Not after today. <laughs> not after today. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ronnie sounds very secure. Who would she want to? Well, oddly enough, it is not Rob the camera guy. All right, is it somebody people will know? Somebody you know very well. I think oh. he used to live with him. Oh, no. Will? Yeah, Will.
Oh my goodness. She dreams of fucking Will. Yeah, uh, I have to say. The whole time. Will's my bro. If she was going to fuck somebody, I'd be I'd be proud for it to be Will. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. What do you think of that, man? You're, 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 you're in the game, bro. You're in the game. I'll tap that ass. <laughs> I'll give it to her. Have sounds a like party. Sounds like you're ready to tap any ass that walks ar- walks around. Pretty much. That's you true. got the married man syndrome, man. Oh, uh, we both that's right. Yeah, uh-huh. well, we're, we're married. At the block party uh, this weekend, you know, Will and I went up on stage, and for you know, they told us ten minutes beforehand, go up on stage and say something. So right. I just went up. And talked about every woman here that I want to have sex with. Like, who do you want to have sex? <laughs> with? Oh my god! Every Teddy's girlfriend, and our Teddy's wife, Poppy, Will's wife, Doug Goodstein's, Doug Goodstein's wife. wife, John Belaris was there with like some Playboy model. I uh, want to fuck her. Oh, I want to fuck her. Fuck John Belaris. I want to fuck Rob Martin's girlfriend. Wow. I, it just, there's the list. Is just you got the endless. same disease, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's bad, but what no. are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Better not do anything. <laughs> exactly. Good point. All right. All right. Your wife, uh, her phone went to voicemail just as well. Nobody cares who uh, about you and your wife. I do. Thank you. Actually. All right. <laughs> you did care. You like it. Well, take care of it in your personal uh, time. All right. That was a bust. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. That uh, concludes today's version of Who Would My Wife Want to Have Sex With? Thank you for playing Who Would My Woman Bang on the Howard Stern Show. There you go. Well, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Roommates. We share everything. You know, Will's obviously sure. known, Will's obviously known as the hot guy around here, but this runs a little bit. But you deeper. are Carmel. Well, <laughs> thanks. I mean I wasn't gonna say it myself, but oh, okay. anyway, let's get to it. Do you think this runs a little deeper because obviously Janice was over at your apartment together? You know, do you think she caught Will coming out? Are you starting to retrace your steps? Like Will coming what? out of the shower? You know, he has nice legs, you know, things like that. Do you think uh she was noticing things all the while? I didn't leave hair on the uh Toilet seat, like Jason, that type of stuff. <laughs> Jason, Who are you talking to, him? Yeah. Both of you guys. Oh. Jason, did you notice anything? Like, and now, now are you retracing it, your steps? Like, w- was she checking well, it, Will out all the while? It's so funny because, I mean, obviously, uh, Will's a very attractive guy, and girls like him all the time, but mm-hmm. when I was going through the list in my head of who it would be, Will never popped in there, so right. it did come as a surprise. And, you know, when we lived together, when Will and I lived together, you know, I could, you know, occasionally hear him having sex. And I, now I'm wondering, like, did she hear that? Is there something going on? She like, I never made those noises. I don't know. I don't know. But in all honesty, I'm happy it's Will because it would gross me out if it was somebody else. I think the smartest thing in the world will be other guys here to have their wives sleep with me because nothing will have you go running back to your husband quicker. <laughs> Good point. It's a safe 30 guard. seconds in a sack with in me. A, in a way, you're a safeguard against cheating. I think I, if I'm everybody here, I'm praying my name is on that list. They get a little taste and they want no more. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. You're very mature about this. Thank you. (laughs) Very mature. Tommy. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good, good, Woody. Welcome, welcome. Which way are we headed? Just follow me, please. Okay. Very cool. So the, the new book, Hitmaker. Oh, yeah. I'm going to talk about that and I'm sure a bunch of other things with Howard today. Which way are we headed? Oh, uh, you're going right in there. Okay. All right. Thanks, Tommy. Right in here. Okay. Uh, the book, he was head of Sony for 15 years. You see the people that he's worked with. He's credited with discovering Shakira. Oh, he also said the Beyonce thing was not much to do about nothing. What, the lip syncing? Yeah. How could it be? The hell? Well, I, I agree. agree. I disagree. I disagree. It's, I'm with you. I think it's a big deal. Sing. That's what you do. Like, you were hired to sing. <laughs> I get it, but I didn't pay to see her. I guess that's the difference. I can't believe yeah, sure. Yeah, but, but that's the point. When you pay to see her, it's a whole fucking deal, too. 
Tommy Mattola, a lot of people uh, don't know who Tommy is. Tommy used to run Sony Records. He started out. Oh, there's, there's Tommy. Look at you. Here's a song I wrote about you. Is, you're going to oh, sing for Tommy? I'm going to sing for Tommy. It's called Hero. I wrote it. There it is. You know I wrote this song? What mic are you on? One? Let me see. Yeah. Wow. Tommy, why write a book even? Like, you've got tons of dough, right? You made a ton of money being, uh, not only, you started out as like a manager of right. uh, the Hall and & Oates and right. all these uh, guys. The big manager. Oh, there's your coffee. Um, Thank you. And, y- you know, why bother writing a book? You don't need the dough. You, you know, you're married to uh, Talia. You, you, you made, a, I, I think you're worth over $200 million. What, have you been <laughs> counting? Oh, I do. <laughs> Trying to catch up to you, Howard. Tommy <laughs> makes so much money that he actually picks up the check if we go to dinner. Wow. <laughs> Seriously. It, That's not a rich man. Because Howard's cheap, you know that. <laughs> right. He has alligator arms. You know what those are? What are those? <laughs> Little short arms. They don't go into your pocket. Yeah, oh. they don't Yeah, they don't reach the table. <laughs> are you uh, implying something here, Tom? No. <laughs> I, are you kidding? <laughs> no, in fact, if there's a great, if you go to dinner with Tommy Mottola and it's a great meal, he mm-hmm. buys the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you're a millionaire, many Multi- times multi multi-millionaire. And uh, why why write a book? Well, <clears throat> a couple of uh, it's it's funny. I, I I really never wanted to write a book. A mutual friend of ours, Dan Cloris, right, kept pushing me, and uh, you know, finally I said yes. So I took two shots at it, and I didn't like it, and I actually threw them away. Why? Because all of the good stuff that you're going to write, I mean, you know a lot of secrets about people in the recording industry. Uh, were you like, hey, I, I don't want to betray them? These people are still alive? <laughs> you, you know, yeah. what I thought would be interesting is that since everything, you know, because of the internet, becomes vaporized very quickly these days, right? Yeah. You know, I thought that if there could be a story that would talk about popular music and uh, as a golden age between Elvis and the iPod, and then maybe I could tell a story in the middle of it yeah. uh, about some of the things that I did and keep it interesting, uh, that might be fun as opposed to a boring biography. Now, I started reading in the newspaper, a couple, like maybe a year or two ago, that Simon Cowell, like this would have made you a household <laughs> name, Simon Cowell was thinking of making you a judge on the X Factor. In fact, the rumor was so strong that I, I just figured it was days away from being signed. Right. Is that something that would interest you, being a judge on a reality show? You know, I, I, I've always seen myself as someone more behind the scenes as opposed to in front of the camera. Right. Uh, I was never really comfortable with that. But doesn't, so, wouldn't that be the ultimate for you? Wouldn't it, that be appealing to you to be the famous guy now? O- only if I could be on America's Got Talent with you. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, we I would definitely love that. need a replacement for someone there. Someone there, yes. Right. But you know what? I actually think you would be a great judge because yeah. your whole job was judging talent. Absolutely. When you so, so what happened to that rumor? I mean, was there an approach made? Simon and I are very close friends, and we spoke about it for months. And uh, you know, he wanted me to go to London first, and then come back and help him out with the show in London. And I just thought that, based on what's going on in my life, that that really wouldn't work out. And again, feeling uncomfortable that you have to sort of be a little bit animated sometimes. I wasn't so sure about it, so I decided not to do it. In other words, you would be uncomfortable saying to someone, "Hey, you're not a good singer." I wouldn't be uncomfortable with that. I just right. would not want to be not myself and have to be animated beyond, you know, what my normal personality is. Yeah, in a sense that you're a pretty laid back mm-hmm. guy, you would have to sort of push some sort of agenda and a personality that maybe isn't in you. You're on T V. You don't want to see like a lump of, you know. Right garbage sitting there. Right. And you could be a lump of garbage on TV <laughs> and, uh, and not pull it off. That right. might be cool, though. What, to see a lump of garbage on TV? <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we seen enough lumps of garbage on TV? Tommy doesn't want to be that way. So when did you write that song, by the way? What, Hero? Yes. <laughs> well, I, you did know, you write that about you, me this morning? Or? Do you think that when you wrote this book, Mariah Carey is sitting there, like, nervous that you're going to say something about her that's, uh, you know, I mean, you know how she is sexually, you know, I mean, you could write a lot of stuff about her, as she could about you. Well, all I said was nothing but complimentary things about her talent and about uh, the realities of the situation and took full responsibility, in fact, uh, for a lot of things that, you know, have been written uh, in yeah, the Yeah, but past. didn't you take the hits, like, like Mariah will go around <laughs> saying, um... 
uh, hey, Nick Cannon's the first love of my life. Did you right. read that quote somewhere? Yeah, well, I'm happy for her. That's great. Nick's a great guy. Right. I love Nick. But that's saying <clears throat> to you, I think, hey, Tommy, I married you, but I never loved you. Do, do you well, think that's accurate? Look, you know, the pressures that were put on Mariah at the time that she was 19 and 20 years old were extraordinary. Right. Uh, if you can imagine a person that age being thrown into a whirlwind uh, of business people surrounding her, sort of telling her what to do, trying to guide her and direct her, and then all of a sudden, upon the launch of that first album, becoming the biggest superstar in the world, and then having that continue year after tremendous year. Tremendous pressure. Tremendous pressure. And you know what's and weird? And of, of course, feeling, you know, the feeling of being controlled and all the things that she's always talked about. When you have that many people coming at you, including your husband, right? Right. You can certainly feel like those things are overwhelming. So I totally understand it. She accuses you of being controlling. Like you literally would tell her what to wear. You would tell her what songs to sing. And in a sense, though, couldn't you make the argument that that's what made her successful? Having the president of the record company, a guy who had molded all these careers, taking that much interest in you. Yeah, you're a control freak. But is that so bad? Yeah, I, I think I think you know anything can be taken out of context. Uh, I didn't write the songs. First of all, she did. Right. Uh, I helped make the records. Okay, those records all became number one. But you know, at making suggestions about what to wear after having the experience of all the things that you go through. Right. Uh, and and dealing with all of the artists that you deal with on that way. Right. And if you have an upbringing that where there are no boundaries to begin with, you know, and then people in your life, not only myself, but everybody surrounding you. Don't forget, this was a giant corporation. I had 14,000 people working there. Right. There were at least 50 people constantly dealing with all the stars. So all of this was coming at once. Yeah, but if you're, a, if you're the president of the record company, and I'm another artist, I'm not Mariah Carey, but I'm with Sony, I might have been like, you know what? Tommy's consumed with Mariah. I'm not getting his attention at all. I bet you there was a lot of jealousy uh, back then. Like like Cindy Lauper, she's very critical of you because you didn't pay enough attention to her. I mean, you must have been getting that from all sides, being married to Mariah Carey. It's probably a recipe for disaster for you and for her. Well, let me go through the list just for a second. Okay. okay. I mean, if you want to deal with it just from the female diva point of view. Right. So there was Mariah. Right. There was Celine Dion, who sold even more records than Mariah. Right. Gloria Stefan. Right. Barbara Streisand. Whoa. Beyonce. All at the same level. Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. Wow. Do you think any of them... Do you have any hair left? Do you, <laughs> <laughs> Do you think any of them complained about what happened to their lives and their success? No, I'm sure okay, that so, they were happy. So, you know, there you go. Right. You so know, Again, you say, at the end of the day, it's about results. So. so you say to the other people on the label, hey, if your careers weren't going that well, maybe it's not my problem. Maybe it was somebody else's. Uh, listen, at the end of the day, the... You know, artists tend to always point the finger at the record company. Right. And there's nothing you can do about that. Does that drive you crazy? Uh, no, because it's part of the game. Yeah, but doesn't it drive you crazy when you busted your... I know if I was going to have a guy, if I was going to put out a record, I'd want you on my team because right. you are ruthless. Yeah. When you're into an artist... You have to be. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I know in your book you point out that like um, one time they wouldn't let Ricky Martin on some show. The Grammys. Yeah. You pulled... They didn't know really who Ricky Martin was and what he was about. So you said to them, hey, fuck you. You, want, you. you don't want Ricky Martin? I'm pulling all my artists off your Grammys. Well, that was a year that we had booked uh, another three or four major stars on the show. And uh, we thought that year for sure, I think we had Lauren Hill, who walked away with, a, <clears throat> I think, six Grammys that night and lots of other stars. And we absolutely uh, flexed our muscles and said, listen, we have to have this artist on we are telling you that this is going to be groundbreaking. And we had a huge fight about it. In fact, mm. I had to go directly to Les Moonves about it. Wow. And you yeah. forced Ricky Martin onto that agenda. We exercised a lot of pressure. <laughs> right. Well, yes. I mean, but that's the kind of guy you want on your team, well, right? I mean, this. listen, it's competitive. That's what you do, you know? And that's what my job is and was, you know? Uh, Isn't it at amazing? the end of the day, I'm really a conduit to being able to get all of that out to people as best and as much as I possibly can. See, that's why I think you would be the ultimate judge on X Factor. Okay, so I mean, if you if that's your, I mean, who has made more hit makers than you? Right.
So when you, so when, how do you find a Mariah Carey? She's 18 years old. What were you at? Some party and someone handed you a tape? Yeah, as the story goes, I was at a party. It was a launch party, uh, actually for a new artist who, I don't know if anybody would remember, but her name is Patsy Kensett. I, mean, I actually, know the name. She was an actress. She, yeah. was, an, she was an actress from Australia, exactly. She wanted to have a recording career? She wanted a recording career. And yeah. So she had a group, and so we went there for a party for her uh, launch. Right. And another friend of mine, a singer named Brenda K. Starr, had walked in with this young girl, and she introduced me. She said, this is my friend Mariah. And then she handed me a tape, and that's the way it went. And Mariah was standing there? Mariah was standing there, you know, looked at me. I looked at her, said hello, and I... Any didn't, instant didn't make, attraction? Were you attracted to her immediately? We just, you know, glanced at each other, that kind yeah. of thing. I left the party shortly after that, got in the car, and I said, you know, let me put the tape on. We get dozens of demo tapes, right? Isn't that unusual that you even put the tape on? Would you? Would that be typical of you? It, probably it, most times you don't. You have it's an it's unusual. Guy. Yeah. It's un, you know, usually. But does it make a difference that Brenda K. Starr uh, gave you the tape? Well, she was in my face about listening to it, right. so I put uh -huh. it in. I figured, right. okay, I have. Let me listen. And I heard this singing. And I said, this cannot be this little, you know, white chick that I just heard. Is she uh, a white that, chick? That I just met. Um, it seems her, to be... Her, her mother's Irish. Yeah. And her father was, I think, black and Venezuelan. Oh, okay. So yeah. she is somewhat black. Well, I, absolutely. Right. Her her uh, her father was, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm trying to figure out what everyone What is she, a quadroon or something? Uh, she would be an octoroon, Robin. <laughs> That's an octoroon, right, uh, Tommy? Uh, <laughs> you, married, you admit to being married to an octoroon, don't you? <laughs> I'm right. going to let you guys carry that. All right, Tommy, <laughs> so, so you put the tape in. And you hear this voice. I put the tape in, and I hear a voice that's one of the most extraordinary things I had ever heard. Wow. So I, I said to the driver, turn around. Was she me, singing her own back. songs on that uh, singing tape? Singing her own songs on the demo. Were the songs good? Songs were great. They were great. One of them was great, yeah. One of them was really great. So, but the voice was outstanding. Right. Turn around, go back to the party. She wasn't there. Mm -hmm. So then I go crazy the next day or two trying to find her. Finally. You're yelling at people in your office, find that girl, <laughs> right. like Cinderella. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> and finally, um, you know, we found her, and then she came up to, came up to the office with her mother. And uh, point blank, we said, listen, we don't want you to leave the building. Go get a lawyer, and we'd like to sign you right away. Wow. Yeah, was, what a story. It was that and, simple. And there was another record company interested in her. They had offered her twenty <clears throat> grand to sign, right? Supposedly, yes. And, and uh, you offered her $50,000 to sign. Well, it was more than that. So you got Mariah Carey for a song and a dance, <laughs> right? I mean, Sony, what, 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 you know, how are you not still the president of Sony Records? I mean, you bring in Mariah Carey. You brought in Beyonce. You brought in all these artists. Mm -hmm. Why are they not blowing you right now? <laughs> Seriously, what is that? Well, you know, the good thing is uh, a, a dear friend of mine named Doug Morris is running the company now, and, and they couldn't have a better executive sitting in, in that oh, chair. Oh, come on. He's you, a great guy. Is he fucking up? No. Is absolutely. he doing as well as you did? He's doing fantastic. Well, how many artists did he find compared to you? You Doug don't sit there and do the math? Doug is a veteran. Does He's... he have a Mariah Carey? <laughs> no, he doesn't. He's got Adele. Aren't you see? Well, oh, that's pretty not good. bad, right? Not bad. <laughs> okay. Why did they? Uh, why? Why are you no longer Thing, there? You know, things change and evolve. <clears throat> uh, the the management that was there prior, uh, that is not there any longer, uh, and I didn't see things exactly the same way. I thought I as as the business. How was, did you see things? <clears throat> the business was was evolving. You know, downloads were becoming more and more prevalent. Right. And uh, I saw that what we were doing was eroding. And <clears throat> I thought that the only way to take the company was to make it into a total entertainment company, which means here we are finding, branding, and developing these big, big stars, and the only thing we get out of it is their recordings. Why don't we go in business with them? Manage them. Well, not even manage them, but, you know, become part of their brand, you know, own a piece of their brand, do their touring, book them. And in fact, help become part of the whole 360 degree. In other words, you know, it's not easy to make money just with, with selling CDs well, it anymore. Was the decline, it's impossible. The decline had begun. Could you believe what happened to the music industry? Uh, is it shocking it's to you? It's shocking, yeah. It is. It's shocking. Because in the beginning, when Napster came about, everyone just thought it was this mosquito that right. was going to bite you and nothing was going to happen. But of course, it was an elephant and it stomped on the whole industry. You fought Napster at the time. Are you sorry you did? We all fought Napster. Right. Everybody in the industry, all of us got together and thought like, okay, let's just get rid of this because, you know, um, uh, we don't need this in our lives. And foolishly, we should have embraced it. 
you know. Why? Because it, it, it probably would have been a good vehicle to sell records. Really. Well, it would have been it would have been owned and controlled by the industry at that point, right. <clears throat> and it would have been the vehicle that the industry distributed music by, you know. And then, and then similarly, um, you know, the people running Sony at the time, we had a possible alliance uh, with Steve Jobs, right. and we probably could have had some sort of a partnership with iTunes. Right. We would have been there with him, but because Sony Japan wanted the uh, technology to be proprietary because they considered themselves an electronics and manufacturing company. Right. They wouldn't let us go in business with Steve Jobs. Yeah. So there you go. It's a hard thing to predict, though, you know. What are you going to do? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, it would have been a whole different story if they had gone into business yeah. with Steve Jobs and yeah. really embraced that guy. Yeah. So getting back to the Mariah Carey stuff, because that's probably the most interesting, the most, I mean, you've done a million things, and that is really something. And by the way, speaking of Beyonce, I'll get back to Mariah in a minute. What do you make of Beyonce getting up there and lip syncing the uh, national anthem? I've been in D.C. for dozens of events, and all I can tell you is that uh, technically, when you go down there, it's certainly not up to the levels and standards that we're all used to. Right. So <clears throat> whatever she did because of what was happening technically, whether her voice was lower in the track and she sang on top of it, or she in fact lip synced. It's no big deal. Beyonce, it's not? Beyond, no, it's not a big but deal. But Kelly Clarkson didn't lip sync, and James Taylor didn't lip sync. There must have been a technical reason for it, and I'm sure that there was good reason for it, if, in fact, she did. See, I think she sang, and there was part of the track underneath it. I think it. she sang with the track. I think she sang with the track. And here's the bottom line. Beyonce is one of the greatest singers in is the world. Is she one of the greatest singers one in the world? One of the greatest stylists and singers in the world. But doesn't this throw people into a question mark? I think people are off on a tangent. And they should just get off Beyonce's back. Really? Beyonce is a monster, monster talent. But I, I'm not saying she's not a talent, but I. It By the way, the me. Super Bowl. Yeah. Hardly anybody sings live, except maybe the rock band. Yeah, that we know. Yeah, I, I mean, think I think this was like a con job kind of thing, and people felt like it was a little bit yeah, of. Yeah, I think people feel conned, but they shouldn't. Beyonce has sung beautifully at other inaugurations and other events. Right. You know, I mean, it doesn't get any better than Beyonce. I mean, I stick up for her and wave the flag. I'm sorry. So go back to your life again. So, okay. So you were a married guy. This is all in the book. In fact, you even became Jewish. You're an Italian guy. You became Jewish for your first wife, right? right. And you got kids and the whole thing. Right. But when you meet Mariah Carey, right. romance begins right. to blossom. Right. But who even knows if it's romance? How does that happen? I mean, how does it like not happen? No, but it... when does it start? While you're in the studio working with her? I would have fucked her while she recorded uh, Heroes. <laughs> but that's me. <laughs> Taked off your top. <laughs> so, so uh, Tommy, it's almost impossible to be that powerful in show business, to be the head of Sony Records, to be in charge of all these artists. You're making tons of dough. You're on a major role. You meet this girl who's an extraordinary talent. It's intoxicating, isn't it? Um, things can become intoxicating sometimes. Did you try to fight it, the urge to That's power what I want to know. I, I certainly, you know, at the time I was separated, and I, and I certainly felt that, you know, you mean you separated getting, first, or did you? No, you, you, it was, you, you it were was feeling all it. in the process of, of what was happening in my life. At oh, that okay, time. right. And so, um, you know, working that closely, night and day, on the project, uh, this relationship, you know, began to happen, and uh, and then, of course, one thing led to another, and, and we had a relationship going on. So that was right. something that was almost inevitable. How long did you wait before you guys porked each other uh, <laughs> when you met her? I mean, did you... Did was you, the album finished? Yeah, was the, yeah, yeah. How, you know, Tommy, really, I mean... No, I it, waited till the 100 million mark. He did. Yeah. <laughs> Smart man. You won't, you won't bang an artist that's making less than 100 million, right? No, 100 million sales. Sales, that's right. That's a billion. That's right, a billion. Uh, was it real love for you? Were you in love now that you look back on it and you look back on your life? Um, I, I think we had a great relationship. I think that uh, uh, at the time... Um, there, there was just so much happening so fast. Uh, I, I'm not sure that either of us knew really what was real and what wasn't real. Um, and I think that looking back on it, I take full responsibility for the fact that I should have remained the chairman of the company and made the music and helped all that I, I could have. And it probably would have been better off for both of us had we not had a relationship. Right. What yeah. was the age gap? Uh, 20 years. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. I don't approve I mean, that. Is, I, I have a 19 year age gap. That's appropriate. 19 is it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 19, 20 seems 19 a little is a cutoff, more. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That seems like a sort of a weird thing to yeah, get into, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. But but uh, I think it's more even, you know, age age doesn't mean anything. It's more it's more of what happens, you know, in in your upbringing and that and where the similarities are. I mean, I have But that's, uh, I that that lead I, to you being a much more sophisticated person. Yeah, yeah. But I have I mean, I have an age gap with my wife Talia and, you know, because of her family upbringing and because she was rooted in the same things that I was when I was raised in the Bronx, you know. Right. We have such, so many similarities uh, that it was just like God dropping an angel out of the sky. Tommy, you say in your uh, new book that like when you were planning your marriage to, you know, your big wedding to Mariah, she was studying the uh, Lady Di and, and Prince Charles getting married, and she wanted equally as glamorous a, uh, a wedding, right? Well, did, she wanted to outdo that, of She course. did. And yeah. did you oh outdo goodness. it? Uh, we <laughs> yeah. tried. Yeah, I mean, every aspect of your life was big. I mean, uh, and you had big celebrities there. I mean, who was there? De Niro and uh, Streisand, and I mean, everyone was there, right? Lots of artists from the label were there. Was yeah. that embarrassing? to you in a way that was that too over the top it up? was it was overwhelming you know yeah. because you feel sort of like um you know I, I i don't like the artists to have to do anything that you know they feel compelled that they have to do right do you know what i mean for like an image yeah and because yeah. i was running the company you know i think they felt compelled that they had to be so i always felt awkward about that. And working for the Japanese, I imagine they like a humble guy. They don't want a guy who shows off too much. They like much. a guy who hides under a rock and who goes <laughs> in every day right. like an ant in an ant colony. And gets it done. And gets it done. And that's it. And that's all their culture is about. Did they ever come to you at any point when you were in the midst of Mariah Carey and this big royal wedding and the whole thing? They ever say, hey, Tommy, we love you. You're making a lot of money for this company, but can you calm the fuck down? <laughs> Did they ever say, give you the, the lecture? Well, the the the, the man running the company at the time, his name was Norio Oga. He was the successor of Akio Morita, who was the founder. He was also one of the co-founders. Uh, he was a musician right, uh, and an opera singer, and he got commandeered by Morita to come into the company because he also was an engineer. Okay, so long story short, music was at his in, in the root of his soul and his heart. So he appreciated everything that I did, right, uh, and he understood sort of, I guess, the emotions that go along with that. And we were wildly successful at the time as a company. So everybody sort of embraced it. Uh, and were they happy about it? I'm sure they were not. They were probably very uncomfortable about it. And they let it be known? Um, they did not let it be known. Do you have to learn how to bow when you work for the Japanese? <laughs> do you bow when you meet your uh, masters? I mean, seriously, do you have to, like, bow down and everything? You do a little bit of uh, uh, of the formalities, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had, to, I, I had to go to Japan quite often. I was there, like, every few months at one point. And do they teach you how to bow and stuff? I mean, seriously, you got to learn Japanese they culture, right? They teach you how to, yeah, do all of those things. Yeah, well, I mean, you were tremendously successful for this. What's guys. the protocol? I mean, do you bow lower to some people? Do people bow lower? I mean, I, I really, how do you get that down? <laughs> De you, depends on, on how, how big and important they are. You yeah. work with uh, Hall & Oates, Bob Dylan, Michael Jackson. You say Michael Jackson is the greatest artist you ever worked with in terms of talent, raw talent, right? Michael Jackson certainly, you know, uh, you know, he had it all. I mean, dancing, singing, writing. But how odd a guy. I mean, like you had personal interactions with this guy. You had to I worked with him for 15 years. Sure. I mean, how bizarre. I had one Mike, meeting with him. I thought he was out of his fucking skull. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I never saw anything like it. Well, Michael was a true artist. He was um, odd. He was he, he had he had oddities, of course. Is that what a you true know, artist is? You, Are true artists odd, Tommy? Here's the thing: you have to think many of them. Yeah. But if you if you think about his upbringing and what he went through from the early age of four or five, yeah. and going through the whole Jackson Five scenario and dealing with that family and the father and the jealousy. And the things that they put him through. Yeah, but when you're working with him, do you ever have to sit him down and say, "Listen, we're in the business together. Yeah. Uh, you can't look so fucking white. Stop dyeing your skin. Stop getting the nose jobs." Do you ever have to sit down and lecture an artist? Well, it wasn't for me to be judgmental about that. You know, I could comment on the music. Right. Uh, that was my job, but certainly. Do you, you ever know, feel intimidated commenting on music to Michael Jackson? Not really. No. You no. say, "Fuck it. That's my role." I mean, at the end of the day, the axe is going to fall on my head if it's not successful. And Have obviously, you ever, did, you when he walk, had, did you ever walk in a room with him and say, Michael, this song is shit? No. But what you would try to do is say, 
listen, you think this arrangement could be like this, or you think it could be changed like that, or what do you think about this song being the first single and not this one? And what of if course, he says, no, fuck you, well, Tommy? Well, then, then we had a, you know, his wish was our command. At the end of the day... You have to bow to him. At the end of the day, you're there to serve the artist. Right. Did you ever hear Period. his real speaking voice? <laughs> Tommy, I'm going to do something right now. Yes. <laughs> I, I really talk like this. Right. <laughs> you right? right. want me to it. change my song? Fuck you. Yeah. I heard no. it many times, especially yeah. 3 a.m. sometimes when <laughs> my phone would ring when I'd be sleeping. Unbelievable. And it would be, you know, like, you know, Matola? Yeah. <laughs> it's Michael. Of course, you think it's somebody pranking you at first. And you go like, what? So here yeah. you have ultimate respect for this guy. You guys make a lot of money together. And then you have this horrible falling out. Like, right. he went public. Tommy Mottola is a piece of shit. Right. Fuck him. The devil. Right. You, you <laughs> ruined his... What album was it that he... Uh, Invincible. Invincible. Like right. you put, how much money did you pump into Invincible? Well, the recording costs were tens of millions of dollars. Which and is then insane, the market, right? And then the marketing dollars were tens of millions on top of that. Invincible? The normal cost, expensive cost of recording an album would be a million dollars. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you, you spend know? tens would, of millions was, of dollars on? What do you do when you start seeing millions of dollars? You know, Michael this? thought that everything bigger was better. Right. And, you know, he was allowed to do that. At but the how end did of the he day, spend $10 million? Yeah, I mean, what, what are you doing? There would be six recording studios going at a time. Wow. In different parts of the country or different parts of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Multiple producers, multiple songwriters. Um there was one situation where I went to see him in Miami and the whole studio was booked and um, you know I walked in the studio and no one was there I walked through the rooms right and the lights were on but nobody was there and then somebody told me he's out in the parking lot in a remote recording truck oh. so he preferred to sit <laughs> in the truck and listen back as opposed to being in the studio but you know what we, the hell? And ultimately... At the end of the day, ulti you know, Ultimately, though, isn't he killing himself because that $10 million is going to be charged against his profits? It's all his money. Right. All of that was his money and his royalties, but he chose to spend it. So, you know, when it's Michael Jackson and, and the guy has that much success and that much talent, if he chooses as an adult man to spend and invest his money that way, you do everything you can to tell him that it's being extravagant and possibly wasteful and if he doesn't want to hear it then you go along with it and you do the best you can right and when when all this uh, <coughs> child stuff went down where it was you know whether he's a pedophile or not at some point are you just pulling the hair out of your head you're like my god this guy is a commodity this is a guy he's an artist but jesus christ at the end of the day he's a money machine mm -hmm. and it looked like it was all going down the tubes you were and and you have him signed to a contract right what do you do? Well, look, we had to deal with all the fallout uh, around that and what, what our job was to support Michael, and that's what we did. I mean, What do you do when those kind of allegations are swirling around an artist? What do you do? We what, had how do you our, spring into action? We had our publicity machines out there supporting Michael and, uh, and not being judgmental about anything. Did you ever feel, well, y did you ever feel, well, maybe this guy is a, a pedophile and I've got to maybe distance myself from him? No, I never distanced myself from Michael, ever. You, you always believed in his innocence? I always believed in him as, no. as as a person and as a talent. Did anybody? And I was never. I truthfully, I was never judgmental about it because, you know, my feeling is unless you actually see something and see somebody, I don't care about hearsay. People have hearsay about everybody, about you, about me. Would about you this. send your kids to his house? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. Hey, Robin. Good question. <laughs> Let me tell you, Tommy's protective of his kids. I, I'll tell you a story real quick. I was at a party somewhere years ago. Tommy's daughter, one of his daughters, very, very beautiful girl, gorgeous girl, very, very attractive. A friend of mine um, started hitting on her. And I'm watching this whole thing go down. And I know Tommy's the father. When was this? I never told you this, did no, I? No. And I don't know. I look like maybe things could get romantic. I pull my friend aside. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do you the biggest favor of your life. Tommy Mottola will kill you. <laughs> Get away from her immediately. I don't approve of you being with her. Uh, so Tommy sure as hell is not going to approve of you. You know you're a low life. Who was the guy? I'm not going to say. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to say. Calling him a low life. No, I, I told him, Tommy would mm. never approve of you. I, I was honest with him. That's funny. And Tommy will beat you up. That's funny. <laughs> and so just forget her. He goes, oh, she's really attractive. We're having a moment. Maybe I think she might be into me. I go... She's not into you. Where was this? Uh, oh, my God. It was so many years ago. I'll call the guy and I'll find out. But I would never That's give you the funny. name because That's you probably funny. just haven't beaten That's up funny. anyway. <laughs> you know, you have a tough guy image. 
people think you're in the mafia. People think you have the ability to have people wiped out and killed. Where did all that come from? And maybe that's a good you thing. Know, that you know, I have think that I think you know when if you have a, a name that ends in, in, in a vowel, uh, <laughs> and and if you're born in the Bronx and you come up, you know, the hard way, uh, the way I did, and so many people do. People want to. I want that stick, image. They stick that image. In. Well, you're like they think you're like the chairman of Hadassah or something. <laughs> you know. Hey, by I the mean, way, you know, you they're going to stick that on you. You yeah. know. I, I'm sure uh, becoming Jewish must have ruined that image for Baruch a while. Uh, I. Right. You really became Jewish. Did, did, did you keep a kosher house? Uh, were you, like, why did you have to become Jewish when you married your first wife? Uh, it was the prerequisite to getting married. Oh, her father, her said, yeah. yeah, her family yeah, said. Right, but right. you were not a practicing Jew, were you? No, but no. I, I converted. You know, yeah, have you converted back now that you're married to Talia? I converted uh, back to yes. Tommy Matola is now married to a, uh, a very successful recording artist in the Spanish market, Talia, right. and uh, she's very hot for me. But uh, I can't <laughs> act on it. Yeah, yeah. Tia, she loves me. Secretly. Uh, that's right. Are you happy now? <laughs> but we love Beth, so... Yes. Are you Are you happy now as a married um, man? I, I, I couldn't be happier, and really, you know, I feel blessed, finally, you know, it took... Uh, I feel I feel like it's a, it's been a long journey, yeah. uh, as you well know, to yes. really find the right match. And, and now you're we happy. Have to, we have to learn a lot, you know, and uh, and it's great. She is hot. Couldn't be better. She's hot. Look at her. Look at that picture. Oh, oh very <laughs> Ooh, nice. That's a great picture. Yeah, and she's an earner Actually, too. Actually, she was pregnant there too. No kidding. She yeah. makes big money too, right? Uh, she makes very. Mexicans she does love very well. her like yeah. crazy. Yeah. So when you go down to Mexico, yeah. you're like a god, right? <laughs> you walk around with her, and the Mexicans are uh, going wild. Right? Yeah, yeah. We're. Uh, Talia, Talia. Right. They throw money at her. I Mexico makes me a little anxious and nervous because of all the. Uh, violence down there. But Do you have to go down there with your wife sometimes? When she has to visit sometimes we go, you know, if it's for promotional or... Do you take special precautions? Uh, I think I think it's wise to always do that because uh, it's just there's just too much going on. What kind of heat violence. do you pack when you get down to Mexico? I, I don't pack any You don't heat. pack any heat? So what we, kind of we hire a great security company. Right. I mean, it must be like an army you walk, march through there. Uh, Talia is very popular. Are you nervous because Talia is so popular in Mexico that someone will just say, hey, let's kidnap her and get the money? Well, unfortunately... Um, Two of her sisters were kidnapped. Oh, you're so, kidding. Yeah. Uh, you, about five or ten years ago. To ten years ago, I think. Almost. You're kidding. You yeah, mean because they were attempting to get money out of Talia? I'm not sure what the reasons were, but right. certainly it's been a big, you know, uh, oh my a big God. fear in our family ever since that happened. And what the trauma that they put them through was just awful. And uh, What was you know, the trauma? In other words, when not only is being kidnapped, uh, were, they, were they violent toward them when they kidnapped them? Yes. They were? Huh. Yeah. 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 Wow. It was terrible. Yeah. And you got them back experience. rapidly, right? One of them was released after two weeks, and the other one was about six weeks. That's interminable. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, uh, it was one of the most frightening, horrible experiences that I've ever witnessed. Oh, my God. Yeah, I would yeah. never go to Mexico. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's, it's just a shame, because here's this beautiful country yes. with great people, great food, you know, Great, 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 great culture. Uh, great culture, and this government who will not clean up this mess. They it's, don't know it's how. Sad. No, they don't know because of the corruption. The corruption is is awful, you know. But I mean, it's a potentially as a resource that country is just you know it's so vital. It's crazy. Did you have to mastermind how to get her sisters back? Were you in charge of that? No, they had. Uh, I mean, we had people from here from the FBI trying to help in some of the people in, in law enforcement here working with uh, AFI, which is their equivalent of the FBI in Mexico. And do you have to pay off the kidnappers, or is there a I'm policy? I'm not sure exactly what the details ended up being, but uh, I know something had to go down, and I think eventually they actually caught the kidnappers, wow. and I think they're in jail now. Uh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Horrible. Do you feel helpless? Experience. I mean, is it You're just... totally helpless. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. Nothing you can do, and what you do know is... These are not people who make idle threats. You know, no. these are people who don't care. They have nothing in life. So, for you're them, not dealing with a rational person. No, for them, you know. And if you see them, if you saw these thugs uh, when they were lined up, you know, when they were caught, they're like street bums. Right. You know, they're nothing. They're urchin, and it's just it's sad to uh, think that they would just take people's lives and do that to them. Do you ever wish you married a girl from Maryland? <coughs> I mean, you wouldn't have to deal with all this Mexican stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is Maryland like, safe? I mean, Maryland no. is very safe. Nothing happens there. Right, right. It's unreal. Right, right. 
Jesus, what a life you're having. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It's a wild ride. And how's the sex life with Talia? Is it still uh, going strong? Uh, stronger than ever. She puts out? <laughs> <laughs> it's like wi riding a wild horse. Hall & Oates was your first big claim to fame, right? Yes. You discovered them? I was working for a music publisher at the time, uh, which was Chapel Music, which right. was the world's largest music publisher then. How did uh, you get that job? I had had a job previous to that, which was in a smaller publishing company uh, that I was able to luck out and get. Chapel then bought that company and the head of chapel called me and said, we'd like you to work here. So I lucked out. So I mean, we, I was making all of 200 bucks a week, and I was right. thrilled. I thought You were a young guy starting out. I thought that was terrific and a lot of money. Were you one of those guys <coughs> that was a musician and like, hey, it wasn't working out, so maybe I'll go into the other side of I the business? I started as a musician. What do I, you play? I played guitar, drums, bass. Oh, shit, I'll jam with Lots, you. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I play, um, do what it. is this called? Cajon. 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 Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you want to you jam sometime? I love that. Okay. I didn't know you played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so you were a guy, you wanted to be in a band? Yeah, I was in a band. I mean, that's that's what I did. That's what I wanted to do. Right, and it didn't work out. Took some acting lessons, thought I was going to be a big actor, you know. All yeah, right. That. It just didn't and work so, out. so around the age of 19, I woke up and said, maybe I could do this and be, you know, on the other side of, of the desk and actually help people do what I want to do. So was Hall & Oates the first guys you met who actually <clears throat> had some talent? Got this job. Within the first six months, these two guys literally walk in my office and sit down and play me some songs, and I was like, you got to be kidding me. Right. It was then the greatest thing I had ever heard. Hits after hits. And that was it. You, you knew know? they had hits. I knew they had hits, and I knew they had... I mean, Daryl Hall is one of the greatest sing male singers in the world. Does it pain you that you're on a, a on the outs with those guys? I mean, the uh, outs with who? Hall, Hall and Oates. Oates? Are you? No, oh, I thought not. you were because Hall no. and Oates. They, no, no, I've no. had Daryl in here, and he goes, Ah, uh, Tommy was our manager. We never made any money. All my money went out the window. And well, blah, blah, blah. was that because he was a bad businessman, or or is he accusing you in some way of being we, a bad? You business know, we man? were young kids. We were. Right. I was literally 20 years old when they were 25 or whatever. Right. And you know, we were starting out, so. Um, you know, what they don't realize is all the fancy tours that they wanted to do with all the production uh, that they demanded, you know, cost money. And when you st start looking at all of that and it starts to cost millions of dollars and you have 15 trucks instead of three trucks, well, there you go. Wow. You know, so things go on like that. And then... And you try to step in and you try and tell an artist, you look, you gotta, it is a business. Exactly. And you, yeah, and, exactly. Uh, you know. And, then and by the way, the, sale, but the sales they... and the money at that time yeah. right. was nothing compared to what it became. Right. I right. mean, if you made a few million dollars, which was a lot of money, you know, that was a lot. Okay. But that can easily dissipate if you're spending it on, on, uh, on tour and staging and stuff like that. So compared to where you can get windfalls of tens of millions right. as the 90s went on, uh, they didn't benefit from that. I they, mean, it must have cut through you when Michael Jackson, for example. I mean, the negative stuff is what I'm focusing on. Now, all yeah. the artists who are grateful to you, yeah, that's right. great. Right. <clears throat> but when, when, like, Michael Jackson, who you, who you really believed in and you really yeah. went to business with, turns on you, blames you for his failure. You know, I, It's got to be. A, it's brutal because it's all public. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I woke up one day. I was, uh, I was actually sitting out in uh, uh, Sag Harbor somewhere. Yeah. And... Um, you know, and, and Talia called me and said, you got to come to the television. So I put on CNN, and I see him standing there with Sharpton at this, you know, uh, Action Network, whatever, rally, right? <laughs> right. And, uh, and I see, and he's standing there, and he's talking, and it's about, you know, uh, you know, black artists in the music business, and blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, pulls out this poster, yeah. and it's a picture of me. With devil horns on my right. Head, right? Oh, yeah. And I'm looking at this, and I'm going, okay, okay, now what? <laughs> then he says this, and he says that, and he says, You're the devil. I'm a devil, I'm a racist, I'm all of this stuff, right? And I'm looking, I'm going, you got to be kidding me, oh. right? Now, we had released Invincible about a month prior to that. Mm -hmm. uh, the single had come out probably a month prior to that. Right. Both of them uh, were sort of uneventful compared to his former successes. So and what had happened between lash? that time with his <clears throat> career? Weren't all those allegations... Everything, happening. Yeah, everything I mean, was, was a lot converging. It was a perfect storm. Everything yeah. converged at once, and everything sort of fell on him. All Tommy, of, was it a good it. record? 
It was it was an okay record. It was not nearly as good as some of his other records. What's the best record you were ever responsible for? I mean, what is the thing that you take the most pride in in your career? You mean, of any record? Any record that you put oh out when God. you were the president of that record company. Oh, there were so many. My God, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I had the privilege of, you know, working with Billy and, and, right. and Bruce, you know, who write and produce all their own music. I mean, right. being able to stand alongside those people and say, and have them play their new music for you. Yeah. The privilege and the honor of that. Seriously, for me, it was, you know, that was it. You miss running a record company? Um, not really, because yeah. I, th I think the things that are going on now, it's almost like working up against, you know, an avalanche and, and working against the tide because of what's going on out there with sales. Yeah. You know, if you have a number one record, you'll sell 100,000, which is like, okay, so. Yeah, like you look at an Adele now, <coughs> like, who actually got lucky, not lucky, but got sold a lot of records. <coughs> if you take a look at a guy, like, like even like, like Foo Fighters have a success, right, right. they don't, like, the dollars they would have made exactly back in the day exactly exactly you know i mean it it's the, the the continuity and the consistency to develop artists is not the same because the economics will not allow it are you in, on good terms with billy company. joel now oh yeah billy are you, has, what about I bruce to billy, oh yeah absolutely all so, these guys yeah yeah we had dinner with billy i know yeah i'm sorry, in fact, I'm we'll probably see him next week we're not going to see him yeah, next week yeah See, look at me, Robin. <coughs> we are you two a couple now? Oh, I go to, I go to dinner with Tommy all the time. <laughs> Tommy and I have fun, and Tom, Howard Tommy has, has the best wine. That's right, because you know what? Tommy gives it to me. Exactly. Oh my! Goodness. I make sure this way. It's uh, yeah. I don't blame you. He, he came on my ass. He goes, uh, "Here, why don't you serve this?" <laughs> <laughs> Too much, and uh, and Tommy wears his horns at dinner. Uh, with Is the, that right? Uh, he he brings them out only at Howard's yeah, right. house. <laughs> hey, how did you remember? Uh, of course, you remember. Michael Jackson owned the Beatles catalog, a lot of the Beatles music, a lot yeah. of the publishing. Yeah. So then when he got into financial trouble, you wisely went into business with him and said, hey, I'd like to, you know, Sony well, would like to. The, the way the story goes is we, we helped finance the purchase of that catalog for him. Brilliant, right? Right, right from the get-go. Right. Which, ah. which we bought for $90 million, which was a joke. Right. It's worth a billion plus. So, um, Jeez. And, and then as things went on. Why we did Michael Jackson need you to help him finance that? Is it because he was going through his own money so quickly? He was going through his own money, and rather than go to a bank, right. which would have you know, charged him handsomely, handsomely for the money, right. we worked out an arrangement that was much more you know, in his favor. So in other and, words, and, he you know, we, we were in business with Michael, so right. Michael was, you know, a, a, his revenues were large enough for us to be able to say, okay, look, we can absorb this investment and maybe you'll give us an extra album for it. Right. You know what I mean? I so see. it was easy for him to do with us, and so in he didn't words, get tagged for a huge interest fee. Let me understand this. Yeah. Uh, I'm Michael Jackson. <clears throat> I get it in my head. I want to be. A, I want to own publishing of the Beatles. I hear it's available for ninety million dollars. Right. I go to Sony. I say, Hey, you know what? Why don't you guys put up the ninety million? Right. I'll give you a little action on the deal, and also I'll give you another album. Right. Wow. Yeah. Do you have to go to Japan and say, hey, look, I'm about to enter into a $90 million deal? Uh, no, I think that deal was uh, under our approval. You uh, greenlit that. Don't you shit your pants when you greenlight a $90 million deal? Mm, not if I think it's the right deal to do. I mean, you know, there were wow. lots of big deals that we did. Does McCartney have a problem with you because you were part of owning that mm, uh, catalog? I don't think so. I don't think so. You want me to say I mean, something to him? <laughs> is that what you're asking me to do right now? The book is called, What a Fascinating Life It Is. Tommy Mottola's book is called Hitmaker. The Man and His Music is in Stores Now. Uh, this is some book. This is some life. Imagine all the shit he left out of the book. Oh, I, he still got a... We could ring him out and get a lot more. Was there a That'll book, be in the movie. Was there a book... <laughs> when you were writing this book, were there stories that someone said to you, hey, you cannot put this in because you'll be sued or you'll just... It'll open up a you know, can of worms? my mother once said something to me. If you don't have anything nice to say about somebody, don't say anything at all. So, you know, with within reason, you tell the stories uh, as, as they are. And really, it was it's much more about music and, uh, and, and the things that happened in that time period. So I felt this is different than a, just a normal biography because I think normal biographies can be terribly boring. Do you think Mariah Carey's career went downhill without your tutelage? Like, in other words, did she fuck up without you? I think Mariah is one of the most talented people that I've ever met. I think that her voice and her singing and her artistry and her writing is will always be there and she'll always 
you know, she's made her lasting imprint forever on the public, and but she'll, you, she'll always be a star. She, does she need you? <clears throat> does she need you to manage her career right now? <laughs> and would you have allowed her to do American Idol? You know, American Idol is, is a great show. I mean, I'm great friends with all those people, and, and Randy, certainly, and Simon Fuller. Right. Um, I think that it could be, it could be a, a great platform uh, like it was for Jennifer Lopez, which sort of, in a lot of ways, jump-started everything again for her. Right. right. You know, in, in every way, whether it's movies or branding opportunities. Yeah, but you aren't know. you being diplomatic now? In fact, when, when you were uh, her husband... I'm being and terribly you, diplomatic, yes, and that's has the way I'm going to be. Has her career been mismanaged it, since she left you? Should I hide a tape recorder at this dinner I'm going to have with you? <laughs> and should I really ask you about Mariah and then play it back on the air? Would you give me permission what to do What has happened, that? really? No, but, but in all seriousness, yeah. isn't it true... She wanted to move more into sort of the hip-hop area, and you said to her, I want you singing ballads, I want you doing songs like Hero, this is what, you even say that in the book. I think, I think that, um, you know, the, that, that she absolutely gravitated more uh, towards the hip-hop music, but, you know, she but had But you big, knew it wasn't had, for her. Well, no, no, it absolutely was for her, because hits like Fantasy... And um, Always Be My Baby. Those were great hip-hop records. Right. So there was nothing, abs absolutely nothing uh, that I could say that that direction did except help her. Um, I just think that artists evolve, you know what I mean? And they evolve the way they want. And, you know, since we split up, she's been directing her own evolution, so to speak. Are you, you know, pleased with her evolution? I think no, she's done, you're not. I think she's done well. What? I think she's done well. <laughs> we'll see you at dinner. Okay. <laughs> when the song um, uh, Chez Chez La Femme came out, right. Dr. Doctor Buzzard's original Savannah band, they actually put your name in it. Yeah. Tommy Matola right. lives in a, What's the line? Tommy Matola Lives on the road. Lives on the road. Were you right. complimented by right. that, or did right. you somehow take offense to that? Um, you know, I walked into a rehearsal studio we, when we had signed them, and uh, this was about a month after uh, we had actually signed the band and found them. And so we were going to listen to the songs we were going to record on the album. So they start playing this. So I thought it was a joke. I thought they did it. <laughs> I thought they did it and were singing because I walked in the room. So I'm right, right, right. standing like, there like, okay. The <laughs> and then lo and behold, were it, you end, pleased? it ends up. Do you think they were goofing on you? I, I, I think it was fun. You know, in, in 1976 or 77, you know, and in, in New York, especially, right. where they were literally gods. Yes. I mean, that album probably sold 400,000 copies just in New York City. All right, let me see how you would do a judge on a, be a judge on a reality show. My, my friend Benji over there, writer on our show, yeah. very talented guy, he has a girlfriend. Okay. Her name is Elisa Giordano. Okay. You, I want you to listen to her. You're going to ask me to judge talent? Uh, Elisa's, yes. Okay. Elisa's, do I get this paid is Elisa. For this? She's a gorgeous girl, okay. right? Hi, Elisa. How do you do? Tommy nice will meet you. Pleasure. Do well, Pleasure to see you. Elisa, do well, and Tommy will marry you. <laughs> <laughs> He's already got a beautiful wife. Well, he could use another beautiful wife. All right. Elisa. Has been back in the green room. Have you been hitting the sauce? Is that what you're doing? Sauce? What's that? The, the booze. Have you been hitting booze? Barbecue sauce? I love that. <laughs> yeah, right. Can you believe this guy? Well, that's his girlfriend. Take a look. He's so good looking. Uh, Benji. Benji. Hey, yeah, there, there's is Benji. Is she drunk? All right. Are you drunk? I wish I was drunk right now. All right. All right. Listen. All right. You're going to perform for Tommy. Come in Tommy. here for this audition. Wasted. She's going to perform for you. Nice. Okay. She's going to try her best. Sure. I want you to be honest. She's, okay. If you had gotten the job on X Factor, how right. would you? Let's see how you would have done. Okay. All right. Go oh, ahead. Elisa, like what do you This is just happening go, right what, now? Yeah. What do you want to sing? Is this something you wrote? What do I want to sing or what am I singing? What do you want to sing? You know, I, I am a great songwriter. I'm a great singer, Tommy. Yeah. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't toot your okay, own horn. Go ahead. I'm not. I'm really well, you're not. You're a singer-songwriter. But <laughs> you've been in I bands. also have an act right. that is unlike any other act you've ever seen in your life. Right. I guarantee that. <laughs> right. Right. Well, when you put Benji that. in it, that was up for sure. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. And, no, and, but, but, and but, what uh, about the costume? Is that part of the act? Or? It's the costume? It's just like well, chicken just, costume. Okay, good, good. Well, you're an attractive girl. You don't like girl. chickens? Does she have a good look, or would you change her clothes right off the bat? You don't like this It's interesting. It's an interesting look. All right. Okay. You don't like feathers? I love feathers. listen to me. Focus for a minute. She's just out there Stare at me. This is a huge opportunity. I know. This is a it's guy. too much. He's discovered uh, it's too much for you. Yeah, it's, this is above and beyond what I deserve. All right, well, give it a but shot. Well, you. then take advantage. Take it. Full advantage, advantage of it. Right, this okay. is Tommy Mottola, the author of Hitmaker. <laughs> I the know, guy I've, who ran, I've been reading about He it. ran Sony <laughs> Records. He discovered everyone that he might be important. He discovered too many people. Too yeah. many people. Let's see if he would have discovered you. 
Oh. They might discover you right now. Did you write the lyrics and music to this? I did. You did. All right. It's an original song, which is always good, Tommy. Very good. All right, Tommy. Do tell like me. Piano players. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Is that boring? Okay. Go ahead. Among the brightest lights Close my eyes And I've caught fireflies And I see us As you caught my eye You're beautiful But I don't trust the world Tonight You're beautiful But I don't trust the world can you trust the world with me now? It'll let you down. It'll let you down. Can you trust the world with me now? It'll come around. It'll come around. Um, you're beautiful. But I don't trust the world You're beautiful But I don't trust the world Can you trust the world with me now? It'll let you down It'll let you down Can you trust the world with me now? It'll come around, it'll come around You're beautiful, but I don't trust the world You're beautiful, but I don't trust the world You're beautiful, but I don't trust the world Tonight, tonight Tonight, tonight, tonight. Oh, very nice. I can't hear anything, by the way. Tommy, okay. you know, she's going through a period in her life where she needs to know whether she's got a career. Benji says I don't she, need to know. <laughs> you don't want to know? Don't you want to know from Tommy? Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. Sure. Well, I mean, it's Tommy. But How she had a period you... in her life with, with go ahead, finish She's your... going through a period of her life where she's trying to decide, <clears throat> really, is this, it, Benji's saying, he's the Svengali, he's saying, you are so great, honey, you know, you can love. <clears throat> right. Uh, I think you should be in the music industry, you should continue on, you should push in this. And she's kind of like, I don't know, you know, why hasn't it happened yet? She's losing faith. Are you not sure? You know, I, I'm not sure about myself, but one thing I am sure of is I guarantee you, you've never had anybody in your office like the act that I have for you. And it's not me. It's me and Benji. Oh, stop Together. It. Oh. Benji's got it. No, no, no. Let me, let me say something. <laughs> There's been nobody since, like, Lucy and Desi, Sonny and Cher, that's been a group. But let's evaluate this. A couple. This. Yeah. Oh, don't Forget, you're losing well, faith in are yourself. Are you a comedy act or a singer? Uh, we sing together, but right. we're also comedy. We're something right. that has never been done. Right. But wait and I'm a so second. confident in but this. But what is it, like the Jerky Boys? Or? It, it, well, it's something that shouldn't Tommy, be done, Tommy. Tommy. I can this. tell you that much. Yeah, believe me, I've seen the Benji. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you but, 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 I have kids writing to me right. saying how much they love us together. I'm right. good. Obviously, I'm good. Right. Right. What do you mean, obviously, you're good? I mean, obviously, I'm good. I can play it right. Let's find out from Tommy if you're good. That's the point. Is she obviously good? Tommy, Obviously be honest. <laughs> the song, Better than nothing, the song, right? the, the song is very mediocre, and and your voice, you know, should you should be singing probably a little softer, not singing out as much. It might be better suited for your voice. Uh, you have a very thin, delicate voice. So my opinion is, if you're going to continue to do that, you know, I, I think I would handle material more like that. Um, Oh, it's very honest. The song yeah. is mediocre, but she has some sort of ability, and she should pick different kinds of music. Look, anybody can have a hit. Right. You know, if you get the right song... Can I play and, you my and, hit and with my, um, with my uh, mm. co-writer? No. No? You I'm had an opportunity to sing really? something, sure? yeah. and you chose that. I have right, a hit so Tommy, that I want to play for so you. Tommy, so, Tommy, <clears throat> should she continue pursuing her dream? I would stick with the comedy act. 
You like the oh. comedy act. Mm. Okay, yeah. so let me play it and for you. And he didn't my see that. Let me play it for you. <laughs> what is the comedy act? Wait, let me it, show Benji? it to you. Benji, what? come over here. Can right you now. play 15 seconds of her song, Nymphomaniac? No. no. Benji, Benji, why? Benji, why? Benji, Benji, she do that. Benji. Where is that song? 15 I seconds have on your wall. Benji. Nymphomaniac. T- uh, we tried this already. No, you didn't. But we're, okay, where, where is the song? Me too. All right, Tommy, listen to this. Tommy, all you're right. going to have to listen to uh, all know, of I Lisa Giordano. I'm right. telling you all right, listen. that I have an act. Okay, we're going to play an information. Go, go. Tommy's going to marry you and lock you in a room. <laughs> I want to be locked in that room, but I want Benji in it with me. All right, where is that song? I don't know. I've got 20 songs in me front of me. Me and Benji want to be locked and not fed. Can you tell me where the song is? Yeah, give me a hint. I don't know which one it is. Uh, Nymphomania. Oh, Nymphomania. Here we go. Jersey. Okay, right, let's hear this, Tommy. Come on, give her a chance. Boy, she's a no, boy, boy, she's 15 seconds. Boy, she's a no. I get excited by all the money in the club. I get excited by the boys showing me all the love. I get invited to the parties thrown around the world. I guess that I'm just a lucky little party girl. I heard about you, girl. You into that new freaky shit. Okay. All right, go ahead, Tommy. All right, yeah, so what look, do you here, say, here's Tommy? The bottom it's the chorus. Here's, Tommy's got it. Tommy's got it. Here's the bottom line. If you go want ahead. to make a record like that, mm-hmm. your voice certainly can be done in the studio to come off well. Well, yeah. You know? She's got a voice. If you're going to be a, a singer-songwriter, piano player like this, it's not as easy. Right. You really need the chops, mm-hmm. you know, both vocally and you need the songwriting ability. All right, there you go. That's Simple a I that. totally agree with you. You want to make, you wanna make a, yes, a dance yeah, record or, right. or a hip-hop record that's easy, you know. All right, can I get out of this now? Can I Can I put you my act, though? No. I have an act. That's great. Uh, i got to stop. i got to wrap up with Tommy. It's a 30-second act. No. No, it isn't. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Hurry up. Hurry up. Run over it. Well, thank you, Elisa. Stop it. Elisa, thank you. Online sweetheart. Beautiful game you from Jersey, what do you want? All right, well, she's a nice girl. <laughs> very lovely, very lovely. All right, Tommy, I'm sorry I even went that's, down that's Did Benji learn anything? You, know, you tried things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you look great, Alisa, believe yes, me. Who I like cares? that. As that's long as you're matters, attractive, right? that's what matters the most. That's <laughs> my book. I don't care what anyone says. Did Benji learn anything today? Who did you? Or he, he's gone. He's no, they, going they out with her. They don't listen anyway. I, <laughs> I tried it. That's funny. That's funny. Yes? Alisa, you obviously didn't get the outcome you desired. I wanted to play online sweetheart. Benji did not let me. That was a huge mistake. And, you know, that's how I thought it would go. But you were apprehensive before, you know, your performance. You were tempering your expectations. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to do it, to be honest with you. But I, I would have loved it if I, Benji would have just ran up there and done it with me. But he didn't do that. What am I supposed to do? I can't beg him to do something. And then he's not willing to go on a limb for me. He's not willing to say, oh, I'm going to get up right now. I'm going to sing with you what you're saying. You know, he, he's not willing to, like, go. He's go, only willing to go so far. He's, like, afraid. So, it's just, you know, you, all, you always want a guy that, like, like, the way he was at the beginning, like, how he's, like, so, like, into me and, like, thought I was so great and stuck up for me and said, oh, you know, even if I'm not great, which I don't think I'm, like, some great musician or something, but I appreciated how he kind of went to bat for me and that like really ended like right after we had sex <laughs> so yeah. is he turning from an online sweetheart into an online typical guy every guy's the same are you guys is this relationship shifting towards a friendship has it lost its romance has it lost its, its spark its fire fire we never like we didn't do it the right way, you know, we just like moved in together right away and, you know, he just kind of, I wanted him to be the person he was at first, the person you didn't like. I wanted him to be that person, but he wasn't. He's the person that you like. That's what he is. So he just wants attention that's it, for himself and praise and he won't bend over backwards for somebody he loves. So that's it. All right, Lisa. That's very depressing. I'm like actually sad about it. Don't be sad. I said I believe in this act, and Benji's just like sitting there, probably writing jokes about me. No, he, he, he it's his job. This is his job. They didn't want me to do that. They were all telling you like, no, 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 no. No, but like, if he really believes in me, and he does believe. Like, but he, yeah, this is his job, and he has to. He can't go against his boss. He has to. This is how he pays the bills. You know what I mean? Barely. <laughs> well, whatever. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But this is. I, I'm, done with, I'm done with him. I'm done with him. No, he doesn't give. Me. He doesn't have my best interest. Yes, he does. His ex-girlfriend. He had her naked here three times, looking fat. 
Really? That's the truth. He doesn't care about his girlfriends. He, he had this his ex-girlfriend. She was here in this room and like her big gut was sticking out and he had her like play a stupid contest like to see how stupid she was. He doesn't care about other people. He doesn't. If he would have cared about me, he would have said yes and we yeah, have an act we sing together. He, he, how would they want that? Don't you? I know, but he could go. Like, if he really cared about me. Oh, really? Oh, what is he got? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, in, in a in a corporate world, you have a job. Yes. You know what I mean? That's. I don't know. Could, I don't. I, I don't want. They kept telling you that you could carry him before you couldn't. I know, but like, it's like unfair. I know, I know that you. I know. No, but like Benji should have like. I I feel like Benji should have like. Like, he always sticks up for me. Right. And then he, like, I said, like, we're an act. We're together. And he, like, didn't do, do anything. Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'm gonna... I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. He's, like, only up to me at, like, one point. <laughs> like, like, you know, I said, I don't want to do this by myself. I want you to do it with me. What is the name of the artist that you passed on that you wish you would have signed? You had an opportunity and you blew it. Lisa Giordana? Was it Lisa Giordana? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, there were actually actually two artists signed to our label uh, that, you know, a lot of <clears throat> the labels broke and the, the company was broken down into various different labels. And uh, one of the labels, the Columbia label, and there was the Epic label, of course, um, things would go on in the A&R department sometimes. And, you know, they develop. And then by the time they get to the surface and it's ready for me to get involved, you know, some, then I find out sometimes I don't. But, you know, or there were other right. things. I did directly myself. But two artists that were in development that were let go very prematurely, uh, one was signed at 14 years old and probably let go at 15, was Alicia Keys. Oh, wow. you're kidding. Wow. Yeah. All right. And Sometimes that happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, I have ready. knowledge of it, okay. but of course, yeah. regret, right. regretful. And 50 Cent was the other one. 50 oh. Cent. Yeah. Well, that was a big payday. Damn. So was Alicia Keys. What yeah. happened? He, like, you heard him, and... Well, I didn't even hear them. I, right. didn't, I, I didn't even get a chance. The company but, just didn't know what to do with You know, them. it's a big company. Like right. I said, you know, there's hey, 14,000 people. Uh... There's 60 different countries. Oh, you absolutely. Know, so it's, uh, you know... Good Lord. Yeah. Hard to keep your finger on everything. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a hell of a life. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you took the high road with the Mariah Carey stuff. I always will. She said things. Eh, Tommy was emotionally abusive. It was. It was. It was a living hell. She. You said. know, if you say anything to Mar Mariah yeah. that she doesn't want to hear, I think that's emotional <laughs> abuse. Well, wait a second. Though. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. When you see that kind of Robert, living, next time you be was here it really me. a living hell? Do you think it was a living hell? Like I said, you know, at twenty years old, with all of that coming at you and being thrown into the uh, the, the whole whirlwind of superstardom. It can seem so overwhelming, right? And everything else going on around you in your life. Uh, and then you're also married to the guy running the company. All, yeah, it's a all, recipe all, for all, disaster. It's totally a recipe for disaster, yeah. 100%. Your children were at the wedding. <coughs> My children were at the wedding. Your daughter yeah. cried when you were marrying Mariah Carey. And she cried <laughs> because... Was that happy tears or sad tears? <laughs> no, sad tears, because she knew it was wrong. She, oh, she felt yeah. it wouldn't be good for her father. probably, yeah. You know, and, um, you know, and then... Of course, you know, they, they, they love Talia like everybody does now. Yes. And, you know, and they're happy for me and I'm happy for them. And thank God we have a beautiful whole family. You know? Yeah, I love Talia. Yeah. So a lovely woman. Thank you. Very luscious. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> uh, good for you. Listen, what can I tell you? Very exciting day. Thank you. Tommy with his book. He didn't need to write a book. He wrote it for you. It's your job to go buy it now. Is that right, Tommy? Correct. That's it. Uh, the book is called Hitmaker. The man and his music is in stores right now. You go there, you buy the book. Uh, even bookstores are out of business almost soon, yeah, right? There you That's go. Right. They buy yeah, it everything's right. changing. Amazon. That's right. <laughs> and if this book is a success, Tommy's going to write everything. Sex Life with Mariah. This is a tease. Oh, this is a tease. <coughs> Our wild parties with Howard. Wild parties. <laughs> right. I've partied with you. Right. Yes, sir. You're a member of the NRA, aren't you? Uh, I was a member of the NRA, you yes. You quit? I didn't quit, <clears throat> but I didn't keep it up. I, I think that uh, it's so funny that you ask that. Um, I just think that the way they handled the whole Sandy Hook thing was so insensitive. Um they did. They 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 missed. I just thought it. it was so disturbing. You know, I mean, to see little children and what happened to them, especially when you have little children. You know, and right. it's really so disturbing. I think it just could have been handled much more delicately. Is that why you quit? 
Um, it, it, you know, I mean, I, I just sort of haven't been a member for a while. I mean, right. years ago I was a member of the NRA. See that? Tommy says the NRA fucked up. No, <laughs> no, no, please, 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 don't go uh, there. With right, me, Tommy, no. listen, a pleasure to have you here. Okay. And uh, thank you for uh, all the years of the hits. Thank you. Brought us a lot of good music. Thank you. And there's no bigger music fan than me. What are you doing now? But after now you finish the book, what are you doing? It's banging Talia. <laughs> that's it. That's a full time job. That's a full time job. I know that would get tremendous that's, that's needs. That's twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. He's banging her. I'm chained to down to the bed. Yeah. What the hell are you doing now? Anyway, no one can figure out what you're doing. You've told me. I just can't figure it out. Working in a lot of different uh, new businesses. Uh, some in private equity. Producing three Broadway shows. Is that right? Yeah. Ooh. One of them is. Uh, one of them is called Superfly, which is going to be a takeoff of the 70s movie. Right. Yeah. I love that um, movie, Superfly. Bill T. Jones is going to be the director on Broadway. Right. Um, my producing partners are the Dodgers, who are the people who produce Jersey Boys and mm. Jesus Christ Superstar. Wow. So it's exciting, and it'll probably be going on Broadway this year, the end of the year. So, Howard, you have to go <clears> see <throat> another... Uh Broadway show. No, I don't. That's the reason I'm friends with Tommy. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> Do you know Nick at all? I've met Nick. I enjoy working with Nick. Yeah. I and met him briefly, actually, on the streets yeah. uh, uh, in Aspen. Was it awkward? No, we said hello. You know, we were all walking together. It was around Christmas time. Was Mariah around. there? Or was just yeah, in... sure. Oh, she was there, yeah, too? Yeah. Oy vey. Yeah. What a scene that must have been. It was like a been. family affair, yeah. Oh, my God. Do you high-five each other? Yeah, I got her. Yeah, I got her, too. Like, do, you, do you ever do that? Why not? You guys? No? Compared to... All right, all right. <coughs> Did you uh, make love to any of the other artists you signed? Fuck yeah. <coughs> no, but I've been thinking about you, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You no? banged a bunch of these. You ever bang uh, Stevie Nicks? Oh. <laughs> I did not. List all the women you banged while you were the president of a record company. <laughs> For My us. memory just escapes me. It's but you a, did. Come on. You had a no, wild sex no, life, no, didn't no, no. you? I was all business. Really? All business. Seriously. Is that true? Yep. Mistake, because you learned it was a mistake to bang your There you your go. Artists. There you go. You learn right. from your good mistakes. Good for you. Yeah. All right. Good for you. Yeah. Well, it's important. You know, you're the head of a company. You can't be banging everybody, Tommy. You <laughs> Keep it in your pants. <laughs> Crying out loud. Was Mariah a virgin when you married her? <laughs> Describe breaking her hymen. Oh, my. Oh, really, Tommy? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's a project, right? <clears throat> oh, my God. Did you ever say to Nick, hey, Nick, <clears throat> you know, I took her virginity? <laughs> she was a virgin when you married her, wasn't she? Um, you'll have to ask her. I'm wow. not sure about that. I hate when you're a gentleman. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I have, yep. to, I have to interrupt. What? Elisa is, is sobbing. Why? She's mad at Benji, actually. Why? Why, Why? is she? Because Benji didn't stick up for her. What do you mean? What are you Tommy, talking when he talked about, about there's their comedy act. Benji, hold on. I'm going to bring her in. I'm going to bring her in. Oh, all right. I... go well, all right. Oh, well, why goodness. is she sobbing? I don't want to go back in there. Benji, you like totally like didn't like stand up for me. What do you mean? You didn't do anything. You, you should have like, said, yes, we are in it. Benji. We are next. You always do this every time. I like, I say we're doing this together. You never do anything with me. No, I know, but you are only love me to a point. You only love me to a point. Like I'm telling you, like you, you, you didn't want to sing with me. You you didn't want to. You said you didn't want to before. I didn't want to. I understand that, but I understand that, but you. I don't like that. Like I don't want to. I told you what I wanted to do. I wanted to be on my TV. So I want to do that. I don't believe it. I don't bullshit by myself. Sing a song. I don't be cared about. That's why I said, and I'm right. I'm always right. I'm smart about that. I know exactly what to do on everything. You don't know what to do on anything. You're going to see the comedy act? Yeah, I think we're going to have. You're going to have to sit here through the comedy act. Oh, my God. Howard. We can't you have, you have the show held up. <laughs> it's going to be held up. It's being probably. held hostage. <laughs> Hold on a second. Tommy, you could never last as a judge oh on one of these shows. Oh, my God. I made a little five-year-old kid cry. Right. And you made the Lisa yeah, cry. And you made Elisa cry. You're right. a horrible judge. I, right. I can't get... You know, Benji's doing his own show out there. All I can't right, seem okay. to get anything right, going. Right, oh, right. forget it. Tommy, Ooh, try and sneak now. out the no, back, all right? I'm gonna go, yeah. You think Mexico is dangerous? Wait till you go in our hall. <laughs>
<laughs> I mean, my God. Oh, my well, goodness. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I yeah. thought it was a good idea, but obviously it's another idea gone wrong. Right, right. right. Yeah, and don't be But we, did, we were complimentary and said she could make a certain kind of record. You said she could make records. I you know? felt the same way that yeah. you did. I would have preferred her to sing something I already yeah. knew. I mean, that, yes. her voice wasn't bad on that record. No, yeah. no. I, it was great. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Go out and straighten things yeah, out. I, have, I, I don't want anybody feeling Go out bad. and sign her to a deal, will you? Okay. Oh. All right. Uh, make everything right. Uh, Tommy's book, Hitmaker, The Man and His Music, is in stores now. The man who made all the hits. We'll be back right after these words. Hi, Tommy. May I talk to you for a brief moment about sure. the interview? Sure. Is that an example of things you have to do often is tell the truth and just, you know, even when it's someone's dream, like, they, they just don't have the chops for it? Well, I was complimentary. I thought that, you know, if she went in and made a certain kind of record, uh, that she might have a shot. More of a, a comedic theme. No, it wasn't comedic. She was singing a dance record, actually. Oh, the the, the, the final yeah, the track she record. played, not, I, not I would her. Have loved to have seen the comedy act, actually. You you mentioned she has sort of a thin voice. Is that like so? When she tries to belt out a tune, it just seems to fall flat or seems to fall short. It, it, it's better if she records the other other kind of music as opposed to trying to be a singer songwriter. Right. Um, as far as Howard is concerned, you know, you've you've managed and discovered the greats, but is there anyone as unique as Howard Stern? No. Howard Stern is in his own universe. He's the master of the universe. What separates him from all the other, other interviews you've done? Uh, you know, Howard just says whatever he wants to say, and you've got to be ready for every uh, curveball and, uh, and pitch coming at you. And, but you love it nonetheless. I love Howard, so I'm a big fan and I'm a friend. All right. Thanks, Tommy. Good luck with your new book, Hitman. Thank you. have a spelling bee today with it's, tim uh, sabian tim sabian who i'm trying to think who's gonna lose and it's, it's ronnie right ronnie tim and there was one other steve brandano steve brandano evidently is a really piss poor speller <laughs> i was uh just you know somebody i was i guess i was reading something about how or hearing on the news what what people like uh from the show in terms of who tweets yeah and one guy said that he loved Ronnie's tweets just because they were so ridiculous and the grammar was so bad and it's all caps. Yeah, and- yeah. Ronnie can't <laughs> spell. But Tim, I mean, Tim is really bad. But I don't think he's as bad as Ronnie. What about, you don't know about, about Steve? Steve, I don't know. I don't really have much to do with him. He doesn't correspond with you. He looks kind of nerdy, like he'd be a good speller, but. I don't know. They say he's like near retarded when he uh, <laughs> when he spells. I'm not doing this. Stop it! You I'm not doing it. it. No, I'm you doing have it. to do it. You I, agreed I, I don't to have it. to do it. No, you, I didn't do I it. Would I, was, ha- I would have had a guest name. Then get you a guest name. Agree. You don't, stand here. If you agree, I'll do the I'll show. Do, you stand I'll, here. I'll do it. Are you, I'll, I'll play do the show. I'll take after this. I'll play you. You do this. You get my advice, and I'll do the show. After you play this, I'll play you. You do the show. I'll do the show. You do this. Okay, I'll do it after. But I got to do the bit. You lost more weight. Yeah, I know. I'm losing weight. Ronnie lost more weight than no, you. You're just trying to be nice to me, so I stay in here. Exactly. Prick. <laughs> Prick. Oh, you know, the, the other thing is, when I just, just spell the fucking word. No, it's <laughs> come here. When, when I, did you can do it. A funny bit to talk about Howard is when I would call Tim on the intercom, you know, Steve heard me. He goes, you know, none of us want to do this bit. Well, of course not. Who wants to do it? <laughs> oh, so I can be humiliated. Right. I shit on the walls. I can't spell. <laughs> the fuck else you want to do to me? <laughs> what do I want to do to you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Just be a team player. Hey, hey, stop it! I'm on the air now. Okay.
Hey, shh, come on, All quiet. Right. Uh, Tim uh, protesting loudly. He does mm. not. He does not want to be I, a part of it. I need this aggravation like I need a hole in my fucking head. Tim, calm, calm yes, down. Sir. You can't beat Ronnie easy. and Steve. Let, no, no, no. You do this, and I'll do the show. All right. Let's I tell switch. you what. Let's if switch. you want me to do the spelling bee, I'll play you after we play the okay. spelling bee. Okay. All right? All right. That's what you want. No, I don't want that either. All right. Yeah. All I, right. Want to you go ready? Back to, I want to go back to my desk and finish my job today. It is time now for great. the big spelling great. bee. Oh, great. Calm down, man. Take it easy. Great. And now, the Howard Stern yeah, Show come. spelling bee. All right. Very good. You, you talked all over the intro. <laughs> good. What kind of, I'm what doing production. You, blah, man. blah, blah, blah. Let's go. I got to go back to my desk. Ronnie the Limo I got Driver, work to do. Tim Sabian, and Steve Brandana, we have determined you three are the worst spellers at the show. I know I am. I'll now take that award. Time. All right, here of we course, go. Of course, of right. course. Right. Let's am. see who is the worst. Steve, can I hear your mic? Check, check, check. Hello. Tim, can I hear your mic? Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Ronnie the Limo Driver. Hello, hello. All right, we'll start with <laughs> Steve Brandano. Steve, since you are the least known on the show, we'll start with you. Steve Brendano, yes. spell the following word. Definitely. Definitely. D E F I N T L Y. All right, that is wrong. All right, Tim, you get the word. Definitely. Oh, good. Oh, definitely. F U C K Y O U. Come on, definitely. Tim. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, definitely. D I F F E N. I T L Y. Oh my. L Y. I, I, can, can, I, can, can I have a wrong. can I have a piece of paper? No. Let me write this down. I didn't have a piece of paper. G g give me a piece of paper with a pen. D do you think a piece of paper is really going to help? D I F F E N. Wait, you had your chance. Does it go back around? No, no. Well, I'm going to go to Ronnie now. He gets wrong. You got that wrong. It, it's not like a real the spelling bee. The score so far is uh, minus one hundred. No, minus one for uh, <laughs> minus one for Steve. <laughs> Minus one for Tim. Ronnie, you can steal here. Definitely. Uh, D-E-F-I-N-I-T-L-E-Y. That is wrong. Can, does it go, right. Do I get another shot at it? it? This Steve, whole contest is going to be spelling definitely. I want a piece of paper. Oh, I, want a piece of paper. All right. D I want a piece of paper. It's Steve's pen. turn. Go ahead. D-E-F-I-N-T-L-E-Y. Wrong. Wrong. Damn. Right. Damn. 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 All right, Tim. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely not spelling this. Okay, can I get a piece of paper and a pen? None of the uh, on the next round, maybe. No. Oh, See, come try, on. Can, well, how, you, none of the guys have that. Exactly. I'm going to have right, it. So I, will I will give that to you for the next round. But now we have to do it fair and square. Why are you being so difficult gets, today? Definitely. Go ahead. Oh, did you get enough sleep? What go time ahead. did you get up? Come on. If it comes back around, I got it. All right, go ahead, Tim. Definitely. Okay. Take your time. Definitely. D I F F I Don't try to N A T E L Y Now you left out Wrong. Uh, you 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 almost hit every letter in the alphabet. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right, now Ronnie, it's minus two to minus two. Ronnie, you're minus one. You could go up to zero. Huh. Go ahead, definitely, Ron. Take your time. I need um, a piece of paper. D E F I N T L Y. All right, one more, one more shot. <laughs> <laughs> Never step on my sound effects, Steve. Yeah. All right, one more round on definitely, and then I got to, because you're all we at minus two. We got to move to another. Okay. All right, Steve Word. Brandano, D definitely. D-E-F-I-N-T-E-L-Y. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I can't spell it. Tim, your last chance on definitely. I don't care. I don't, don't care. care. I, You're close. I don't care. Come on, go ahead. I don't care. Why? I, I want give you to me a win. piece of paper. You to You're getting that on the next word. No, I just forget it. I don't right. even care. Come on, try it. My, my buddy John Wilcox just drove thing. into a ditch. No, definitely. Come on, you can win this come, fucking come, thing, you okay, asshole. Okay. Try it. That's Mr. Asshole to you. You were fooling around. You were fooling around. All right, D-I-F-F-E-N-I-T-E-L-Y. Wrong. <laughs> no? What did I miss? Ronnie the limo driver. L Y. This is your last chance Just, to steal. Uh, Definitely. Give me the goddamn word. D E F. 
I N I T L E Y. No. L Y. So how do you spell this word? <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you the answer. I don't care. You want one more shot on it? No. Oh my no God, that's three rounds already, <laughs> Howard. I did my L. Oh, one more time. No, let, no. If, if, I could listen to you guys spell definitely all day. No, 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 no. no the great the thing is you got the answers in front of you. I love the struggle. You know, like Dr. Yeah. King said, I have a dream. Yeah. Your dream is to spell definitely. Yeah, my, I have a nightmare. All right. It's define, and then I don't know the end. All right, let's let's go through it. All right, D, you all had right. Tim right. got lost on the second letter. Tim, the second letter is an E, not an I. It's what did I definitely say? not Or an A. He tried an A. Yeah, you did well. try an A. I'll give you that. <laughs> I you tried had a lot all. of vowels in there. All right. Uh, definitely. D E F I N I. Nobody got that. E L Y. Ronnie was closer. I had E L Y. No. But yeah, but you, you had one other, time. But you had, I, I had, I, I, you had how, double F. You had double you had all R's. Kinds of things. Mr. Mr. Stern, double I have to see it. On, one F. It's one F. Mr. Stern, I have to see it on. paper. I understand. Okay, okay. but we're trying this without paper. Let's try it again. Define all right. nightly. All right. By the way, the score is minus three, so it's equal now. It's anyone's game. Hey, Howard. Yeah. Can I point out an observation? John Hyde just told me. Uh, Ronnie spelled it wrong on the first and third. Tried the same exact way. Right. All right. But okay. Give see, him that's why. That's why he was close. He was closer than you two guys. But that's why you need paper. Yeah, it's right. still a level playing field. Robin, slow down. All right, here, here we go. <laughs> Steve Brandano, here is your new word. Acceptable. 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 Okay, okay. go ahead, Steve. Acceptable. A C C E P T A B L E. You are on the board. Winning. There you go. But how are you going to raise this deficit? You've already board. got he's yourself so, into so a So what? Hole. He's minus two. I mean, <laughs> the other guys are minus three. All right, Tim. Here's your chance to really fucking kick ass. Yes, sir. All right, bro. Get okay. psyched. Okay. Like we're in a radio war. I'm all war. pumped up. Okay, here we go. Yeah, radio wars. Amateur. Amateur. A M A U T E R. Amateur. Amateur. Uh, Am I a fucking idiot? A M U. No, nope, that's it. One change. A M. Okay. Give me a piece over. of paper. Hold on. All right, Ronnie, go ahead. Amateur. 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 A M A. Shh. Set oh. your turn. Ronnie, go. Uh, a M A. T E U R. Say that again. What? Could you repeat it? A M A T E U R. That is right. Winning. A M A T E U R. I can't spell without paper. Take and it all right, easy, take Tim. it easy. You're panicking. You can't and you're not... visualize. Visualize no, and take your time because what's happening is you're psyching yourself out. Exactly. All right, let's go to Steve Brandano. The word is. I'm no. not even trying. For anymore. those of this you at home, it. I want to go back to my desk. Hey, uh, you know stop what? talking out of turn. This is why you can't spell. You probably were like here. this in class. After this, I'm not even letting you back at a desk. <laughs> not here. Right. Steve, thank you God. You know what? I don't need this aggravation. I can go home right now. Hold on, hold on, Steve. It's minus. Steve, you have minus two. Tim has minus three, and Ronnie has minus two. So this is anyone's game. How could Tim only have minus three? Didn't he just misspell another word? Yeah, I care, sure. but not oh, no, that much. Oh, no, he's minus four. Yeah, okay. minus four. I, I, Robin, I'm trying to help him out. <laughs> trying to cheat for him. You feel bad for him. All right. Steve Brandano, spell the word calendar. C-A-L-E-N-D. A-R. Correct! Yeah. What Wait, was that he, thing he just e, did? I did eeny, meeny, miny, mo between E and A, <laughs> and I came with A. He gets all, all right. the easy ones. <laughs> oh, please, Tim. <laughs> Tim, believe me, if I asked you to spell it. All right. Tim, here's an easy one. All right, so minus one for Steve. He's working his way oh, back up to zero. Getting into now, a good come on. lead here. Here we go. Tim Sabian. Howard Stern. Column. Column. One from column A and one from column B. You've been in many menus. Many menu. you, you have seen many menus. We know that from the size of your belly. Go ahead, column. Now, did you have to throw that in? Shh. Now, that hurt. Now, think. Now, that distracted me. That You're so bad. nervous. You, you're choking. Now, come on. I am. Column. Column. C. O. L. U. M. N. You got one right. Yay! Winning. You got okay. it right. You Can see? I go to my desk now? No. And you're that's losing. That's a difficult word. I want to go to my I desk. I thought you could have done it, and you did it. 
can I go to my desk now? You're, no. You're doing well. The game's well. not over. You're I have a lot of things roll. to do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You're, you're wasting your time. Do you want to hang with me one day, Howard? <laughs> All right. You're minus What is three. wrong with you today? Yeah, mellow out. I hate this stuff. I, don't, right. I didn't. I hate it too. But I, I gotta be here, obviously. Uh, Ronnie, I it's your turn. Props. Hey, let me fix the pillow on the couch. Mm. Ronnie, the term, the word is accurate. Accurate. Uh, A C C U R A T E. Ronnie is in the game. <laughs> Winning. You have minus one. Steve Brandano has minus one. Tim Sabian has minus three. Here we Come go. Come on, Tim. All right, thanks, Robin. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Steve Brandano, you are going to take it if you get this right. Maintenance. Maintenance. I think I got this. Go ahead. M-A-I-N-T-E-N-A-N-C-E. You are right. You are back to zero. Winning. You're Tim, at zero. <laughs> you are also getting back up to zero. It's minus three for you. Spell the word license. 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 L I C E N S E. This is a game now. Winning. Winning. All right. Ronnie, spell Wednesday. W E D E N S D A Y. Wrong. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh dear. Uh Steve Brandano Wednesday, you could steal this one. Go ahead. W E D N E S D A Y. You got it right. Okay. I don't know. All right. What do you what? mean you don't know? It should not be capital W. Oh, shut up, oh, French. Oh, 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 Worry about those jingles. Splitting hairs. Come on. Splitting Come on. Hairs. Come on. Come on. You didn't hit the correct one, Fred. All right, an easy one for Tim. Let's get him back in the game. Tim, vacuum. Vacuum. V A C U M N. That is C C C C C C C C V A C C U M. All right, let's let come uh, on. You got one. It. All right, I'm you, done. you stumbled there. I'm you done. I'm going back. I'm better at shitting on the walls. You're back to minus look, three. Look, let me go back. Let me. Steve Brandano is at plus one. Ronnie minus two. You can steal right now. Vacuum. V A C U M. Wrong. 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 <laughs> Let's Steve go Brandano. to Steve Brandano. Oh, Brody back down to minus three. Steve, go ahead. This is not fair. Why? What's not fair? Because he now he knows. No, I don't know. Knows. I don't know. Not listening to you two. <laughs> How does he know? He knows. Honestly, I it could be two serve. C's or two U's. I don't know. Oh, I'm, I'm going. Fuck. All right, go ahead. I'm going V-A-C-C-U-M. Wrong. All right, let me. All right, hold it. Just wait your turn till we call him an idiot. All right, go ahead, Tim. It's your chance. S U C K S sucks. Go ahead. Come on, vacuum. All right. Vacuum. V A Don't look C at me. C C U <laughs> What, Robin? I'm just looking at you looking at everybody. I, you're fucking M N Spell it spell it again. Vacuum. Right, that's wrong. You, but you know you Why? What am I thinking? Tell me, spell it for me. I'm not going to spell it yet. It's Ronnie's Give turn. me a piece of paper. Will you? V-A-C-U-M-E. going to help. If I give you a piece vacuum. of paper now... Vacuum. Yeah, vacuum. I don't know. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to... Give him a piece of paper. Give him a piece of paper. Tim, yeah, when, yeah. Your, when your that's turn not, is over, stop bullshit. spelling. No, watch this. Watch why what happens. Why should he have paper? No, give it to him anyway. It's not going to make a difference. Vacuum. I'm going to try it. Go ahead. And I'll deduct another point if he gets it wrong. Deduct two points. All right. Are you ready, Tim? Now you got your piece of paper and your pen. Got it. Going to make a fuck of a difference. Fucking guy. He's, painting, he's painting on that page like Picasso. It's like Picasso. Yeah. <laughs> What's he doing there? Come on, we don't have on, all day. Tim, I don't have all day. If you spelled faster when you didn't have a he's piece of paper. He's drawing a picture or something. Yeah, he's, he's freaking yeah. out. Oh, jeez, forget it. Tim, come on, spell vacuum or not. All right, forget v -A -C -C -U -M -E. Tim. V-A-C-C-U-M-E. Say it again, I can't understand. Vacuum. Spe say it again. V-A-C-C-U-M-E. <laughs> Good you have M -M. a piece of paper. Good, I, would you take the paper away from him? <laughs> it made it worse. <laughs> I, that paper. I don't. What the? Can I go back to my office? All right, Ronnie, your chance now. Tim is at minus five. Spelling Steve was never Dan one of my high zero. points. Ronnie, you're at minus three. Go ahead, vacuum. Oh, this is so fucking bad. V a c h u m. 
<laughs> Say that again. B a c h u m. That is wrong. Wrong. All right. <laughs> do, All right. You got one more round hey, on vacuum. Do uh, I get Do I get good points for good sportsmanship? Steve Brandano, okay, go you. ahead. <laughs> Steve, go. V a c. V. Oh, so I'm starting over. All right. This is not right. V A C U U M. Right. Really? V A C U U M. Vacuum. You've what seen a, stupid a vacuum word. I, I knew it had two U's in it. What a stupid word. Wow, word. how'd you I, pull that out? I, I didn't think that's right. Two U's? Where do you ever see two U's back then? Right. Uh, right. Your vacuum. last word. To redeem yourself. I guess so. Here. Right. Please, dear <laughs> Jesus. Last word of the game. Redeem yourself. Seizure. Go ahead, Tim. Seizure. S E I. Z U R E. Good, very good. All right, you got one right. Thank, Thank God. God. I right. Never He's minus. Good. He was at minus five. Well, Robin, <laughs> let's, right. let's Robin, rub it in. The game is over. Hey, let me uh, oh, announce the you, winner. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ronnie, uh, <laughs> thank coming you. in at thank number. You. Excuse me, coming in at number three is uh, minus four points. Tim Sabian, you dead last. Thank you, Ronnie. See? The limo driver coming in at number two. Oh no, I'm sorry. You're Very tied. Even. Minus four. Oh, maybe we should have one more word. We have a, no, we have I gotta go. I gotta go. I, I, gotta break Howard, the really, I have to go. Steve is winning with plus it's one. It's eight oh three Eastern time. I have right. to go. There, Ronnie, a chance to break <laughs> the tie. Psychology. Go ahead, Ron. Psychology. Tiebreaker between you and Tim. Uh, P H Y. Sound it out. P H Y. P H Y S C O L G Y. All right, for the right, tiebreaker now, uh, Tim Psychology. <laughs> oh I, no! I had it right until he spelled it wrong. Spell it right. P.S. <laughs> right, psychology. P.H.Y. C.O.L.O.G.Y. S. What? S. <laughs> S. O. S. Ronnie, you want one last stab? Because now we're back psychology. Yeah, we're Fuck it. I'm done with go this. Go ahead. Tim, oh, Tim, beat him. Go ahead. Oh, Come on. on. Oh, this is done. I'm done with this. I'm done being a good sport. Go ahead. Ronnie, go ahead, psychology. One more shot oh, so we get the, the time. Same, yeah, word? same word. Come on. <laughs> you I can do it. it. Go ahead. Tim will get it. P H Y S. O. L. Like taking a dump. A G A G Y. A G Y. Wow. All right. Uh, that is wrong. All right. Tiebreaker. You know, so, six. Go so, ahead, Tim. You know, Einstein couldn't spell either. I know that. You know, yeah. You're so. comparing yourself to Einstein. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> hey. You know who else can't spell? Wendy the Retard. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. One last time for psychology, and then I'm calling an end to this nonsense. Thank God. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank God. We all have jobs I'm just to trying do. to get a t uh, second place here. Go ahead, okay, psychology. Okay, okay. Come on. You psychology. can handle this. Okay. You can do All right. this. All right. P-H-Y. Yes. Interesting. C O L O G Y. Wow. That's what it is. I get confused wow. with the S or the C. Robin, I'm ashamed to say oh, that you can't shut get a tiebreaker. <laughs> All right, look, you know what? I'm going to end this atrocity. Thank you. All the right. two of you are tied for last okay, place. Good. Let's go Do you want to know how to spell psychology? No, I don't. I, I know how to spell it, but you're I not, can't. You're spell not it. interested? Yeah, I'm not interested. Give him a piece of paper. I want to no, really see if yeah. he can spell it. Could you do it with a piece of paper? All right, give him a piece of paper. Give him a piece of paper. The paper is going to help. Like the paper is going to help. The paper better have the name on it. Seriously, Tim, spell psychology on the piece of paper. Is it two L's? No. Was that Ronnie? <laughs> Don't confuse him. Take it easy. Don't talk. Three L's. No. Three L's. <laughs> G E Y. He looks like he's doing math. No. <laughs> he's crossing out. He's. He... <laughs> well, give him a chance. All right, the guy's got a problem. Yeah, I Don't do. look over his shoulder. You make him problem. nervous. Which is worse? I should have paid attention in school. Right. He just carried over a four. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, Tim, what do you squared. got there? Okay, P S Y S O L O G Y. That's worse when you get the paper. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is it, Howard? <laughs> is P- isn't it P H Y S? No. No. Let me tell you here. Psychology. P S Y C H O L O G Y. You go to a psychologist. I know. You've got to learn how to spell it. When you get the bill from her, doesn't she put he, say, he, he, Do you guys know any yeah. of the rules of uh, spelling? I was waiting for neighbor. <laughs> N-E-I-G-H-B-O-R. What was that? Neighbor. Yeah, good. I think you got it right. I, yeah, I, you I did, did it fast, right. did. but uh, all right. Well, all right. Can you spell receipt? Receipt. R-E-C-I-E-P-T. Yeah, you're, 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 I tell you what, you're a disaster. I know. <laughs> Listen to me. Yes, sir. R E C I. What? R- e- I- All right, listen, we got to end this. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let me out of here. I mean, go, take a class. No, wow. What do you mean? Spell you, check. you got spell check. I I've got seen you. your memos. You, you need okay. more than spell Howard, check. I'm going to keep all the ones you sent me, and at the end of the year, we're going to. Sound good. Go ahead. I am. I'm, I'm a good speller. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, well. You're better than I, maybe. Okay? How would you know, Tim? Uh, I, I can't yeah, even. I, I, uh, where are you going, Tim? I gotta go back. You're not to done yet. Why I can't. Uh, why why that? What's going on? What? what? What do I have to do now? I don't know. Can I go back to work? Yeah, you go back to work. Okay, thank you. This you is why go. I hate being on the air. I can't stand being in here. Oh, you love it. Look, at I Jeff. hate it. Yes, uh, Jeff, you're on the air in Roselle Park. Go ahead. Hey, Howard, how's it going, man? Hey, man. I gotta say, Tim just completely ruined the uh, bit there. He wouldn't shut up. I mean, roll back the tape. He was embarrassed. See how many, yeah, you see how many times he said, can I go back to my desk? Can I go back to my desk? I mean, yeah, he ruined it. He ruined it. He, he wouldn't stop. I mean, Put I the phone he away. Fire, but he just wouldn't stop. Tim, why'd you have to ruin the bit by yelling the, through the whole bit? Because I hate, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. Right. You know. Tim, you all right, Big Shot, you come here. Trade it. places, all right? Everybody's got a fucking opinion. Write yours down and burn it, will you? You sound like me now. Tim. You're already, Calm down. You're already in the studio. Just go with the bit. I mean, you're there. Just suck it up. Suck it up. I did. I'm here, asshole. He was ashamed. Yeah. He, he, he no, took I'm a lot not, for him to come yeah, in. It yeah, did, yeah. I don't want to do this. I'm not a good speller. I never you was. You're a good sport. Ken, go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, Tim, stop being a little bitch. Jesus yeah, Christ. well... No, really. You gonna yeah. go to the bathroom walls and protest now? Yeah, I am. I'm going to go shit. Yeah, Wait, don't what? shit on the walls. No, give me your address. I'll come to your house. <laughs> and what? Try to spell something? Yeah, I want to come. No, I want to <laughs> shit on your walls. Give me your address, will you? Well, Steve, congratulations. You did yes. win, by the way. <laughs> Quite an honor. Thank I you. I told you. I said he would win. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's most recently in school. I haven't been in school in Tim what, was a, years. Tim was ashamed. A S S H A Y M I N D. Ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Todd, go ahead and rob me. What a bunch of fucking retards. Really? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Let's go to Matt. Matt, you're on the air. Hey, now, Howard. Hey, now. I'm just so stunned because these words are no higher than like a sixth grade level, and there are college graduates everywhere in this country trying to get jobs, and these guys. Well, can't those people who are trying to get jobs haven't tried to get one in radio. They'd easily be here. <laughs> exactly. This is a, a group of C students here That's at right. best. He, he's right about yeah, that, right? Yeah. Anyone who has trouble with any kind of command of anything should go into radio. Exactly right. That's right. Uh, we've always said that. Uh, let's go to uh, Dave. Dave, you're on the air in Chicago. Dave. Hey now. Hey now. Uh, I just gotta say, Ronnie and Tim, both fucking retards. Third grade <laughs> education is the best. Robert, you're on the air. Go ahead and dial us. Hey Howard, uh, with uh, people like Tim running serious, I can totally understand why the stock will never be over a dollar a share. Well, by the way, the stock is over $3 a share, exactly. believe it or not. Exactly. Yeah. Hey now. And, hey uh, now. And quite frankly, if I took all the executives at Sirius, uh, I think Tim would beat them all in this spelling bee. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sad part. Thanks, Howard. That's right. Uh, you, well, Howard. anyway, guys, listen, you are good sports. This was the spelling bee. You did it. You came out. You tried your best. Steve Brandano, you're number one with a plus one on with the board. With a one. With a one. That's right. Uh, Tim, it was a tough day for you. I think if you had relaxed a little and gone with it, you might have spelled better. Yeah, I just, it's just not my thing. Ronnie, uh, you manned up, you came in, you did it, and you just, you, you took it like a champ. And look, you got a whole new uh, thing for Ronnie's block party. You can go out and spell them. Yeah, the exactly. You don't have to yell <laughs> so much. You don't have to yell so much. All right, you invite these two guys and have a spelling bee yeah, on Yeah, right. Stage. Good People idea. People will love it. Exactly. All right, there you go, and thank you for the big spelling bee. This has been the Howard Stern Show Spelling Bee.
Oh, Howard, I want you know I wanted to do this like I want a yeah, fucking hole in it. Thank no, you for doing no, it. Howard, thanking you for doing no, it. Howard, no, yeah, you're. You got a minus eight. No it, you're. Be- <laughs> Hey guys, can we just get the three of you in front of the spell hey, back here? I never... Back if you had just shit little. on the wall during this, it would have been a home run. Seriously, you are owed one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, what, what? No, you are. What, what? When you need a favor, it'll okay. be done. Nobody, listen, I'll tell you this, nobody right. nobody will ever accuse you of not being a team player, for real. Yeah. yeah. If that means I, listen, <laughs> yeah, I, listen, okay, I want to read you the tweets now, watch this. Don't look at your tweets, don't that's a fucking dumb thing, this. don't look at that. This is going to be the greatest. It's a fucking hotline to just yell at you. Are they calling you ugly and uh, anything else? Here, this is the that's greatest. That's can't spell shit. My carpet is dirty, can I borrow your vacuum? Oh, sorry, I meant vacuum. You know what, Tim? You got the listeners in game. Everybody's got an opinion, right? You're just not Tim, you gotta read these out here. Okay. Stop! 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 Stop. 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 Take the phone away from him. Wait, I want you to do it. Right. Right. Just wait. Wait, come over here. Go stand over there. I know, don't. Hey, yo. Go stand over there. What is it? Don't let him tell him to stop. Just, Tim, wait. He's saying, what are you saying? Wait yeah. to. Stop! Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want a business to rely on the reputation for the Lord, then listen here. People are talking about you. All right, Tim, you're going to bum out. After the spelling bee, Tim has been on his Twitter account. He's all freaked out, Robin, because you are freaked out. Because what is he I, explaining I, I on he goes, Twitter? When I, I go on Twitter, everyone's going to be calling me an idiot. All right, read some of your tweets. All right, here we go. Ready? Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> I'm sure Ronnie and Tim Sabian must have been spe- uh, spelling uh, spe- uh, special ed students. Tim is out of his freaking mind. That's number one. <laughs> That's on your Twitter account. Yes. Tim Sabian is a radio vortex, crybaby. My carpet is dirty. Can I borrow your vacuum? Oh, sorry, I meant vacuum. And they spelt it wrong both ways. <laughs> what is your address? I want to come to your house and shit all over your walls. Right. Everybody's got an opinion. Write yours down and burn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Tim Sabian, hopefully you didn't fill out an application for this job. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I just talked to him on the phone and oh, hired him. Yeah. 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 Um, Let's see. Uh, who knew Tim Sabian could could be that stupid? He's de- he definitely is. Um, I'm amazed that Tim Sabian is any type of authority figure. Listening to all of his whining, what a leader! Well, there you go. There you go. No yeah, more right. whining. So stop reading those, okay? okay? I love reading this stuff. Yeah. Marianne from Brooklyn writes. Uh, I think I could win the the Tim Bush game. Got all correct yesterday. Love the Fred scream. You, only you. That's why we love you. Thanks, all right, Marianne. well, she was a negative. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, all right good. Anyway. All right, Tim, thank you. And thank right. you. for uh, Tim, you were a good sport. Thank, thank you for playing. Yeah, I know you. it is difficult to be. No, it's not difficult. Because I, I told you from the beginning I can't spell. I know. I was I know honest. That. I know that. You are honest. Not like Shitgate where you were dishonest. I was honest about that, too. <laughs> Tim. Tim, you struggled mightily in that contest. Uh, I just, I don't care. I don't care. But you I, were, I'm not a speller. But you were Harold Ronnie's a speller. I'm not a speller. Ronnie's a speller. And don't let him kid you. I mean, he's a speller. Is this something you've struggled with? All my life. Most of your life. Yeah, exactly. So today you yes. confronted a demon. Yeah, exactly. Do you I'm feel dis- like you... I'm dyslexic, and I always, I never could spell, so who cares? What well, look where do? you are now. You exactly. Need, and, you, and you did look it without I, spelling. Exactly. Spelling ne- was never one of my high points, and look at me. And I, you were heralded today for being a team player. Exactly. I'm a team player. And that's what a leader does. Exactly right. Throws yeah. himself at his men. To, to do whatever it needs to do. You walked over. You walked over the coals today, exactly. sir. I got to go to both. I got to right. Bye, Tim. Steve-O. Greg. Congratulations, first off. Thank you. Did you believe this could ever occur? It's easy to say now. How I, I've read Ronnie's tweets, so I know that Ronnie has a difficult time spelling. Thank you. Tim. Gent runs the channel and is a wild card. I mean, I've heard that he doesn't spell well, but I know that I don't spell well. So I didn't know what to think about Tim. After we got past definitely and on to the next group of words, I relaxed a lot. And it's because I could see that Tim sucks at spelling. And once that, like, my biggest thing against me was my own head or my own nerves. And once I could see that Tim's were out of control, that I was able to relax a lot and just focus on AR versus ER and, and, and whatever. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that I was able to squeak out with a one point, uh, you know, with a win at one. And uh, 
unfortunately, the only problem with this is you still really can't be proud of it, <laughs> you know? Like, I can't even say thanks, Mom, or uh, Mrs. Nardoni, my second grade teacher, you know, like, because they'd be ashamed. Ronnie, I know your job around here isn't to spell, you're not a paperwork guy, you're not a writer, but... I write you, poetry. But it's true, I'm sorry. Do you think that, in Howard's eyes, he might think you're not paying attention to detail? Because spelling, a lot of spelling is paying attention to detail, and... Hey, when I write my bills, I spell. I know how to spell my bills, I know how to write my fucking bills, that's all that matters. But do you think in Howard's eyes, this points to and a larger... I write my bills, okay? I don't You're old print school. them on a computer. Yeah, you don't go log in as Ricky Man, this and that. Yeah. Okay. You all right with that? Ronnie. What? But I'm saying, do you think this speaks to a larger issue in Howard's eyes? What, that, that what you're, larger issue? That you don't pay attention to detail, in general, not just with your spelling. Whatever, dude. I don't know what you're trying to dig up here, but no, I'm it's saying, not you know, Does this indicate that you're not in your day-to-day -day life, in your, in yeah, your job duties? Yeah, I'm an idiot, duties. okay? You happy? That's what you wanted to hear? You got that for your fucking camera? One more time, please. I'd say it once. And three, two. Three, two. All right, we, I think we got it the first time. Yeah, good. This is the best of the wrap-up show. Wrap up A show. recap and behind-the-scenes look with John High John and Gary Delabate. Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap-up show begins now. Hey, what's up? This is Will, and on Monday's wrap-up show, we talked about dumber than a box of rocks. These girls are truly dumber than a box of rocks. And now we're going to move on to Dumber Than a Box of Rocks, which was brought to you by none other than Will Murray, who had a brief... Oh, the Tournament, Tournament of Champions. Champions. Will, how difficult was it to wrangle these champions? Because one of them never even played before. Yeah, I mean, we went back and looked at everybody who's played the game before, and uh, I think half of them might be dead at this point because their <laughs> numbers no longer work. Um, so we brought back Brittany Stevens, who was excellent. She's a, she's a trooper. And then the last time we did this game was Ricky Six, who played today, and this girl, uh, Jaden Lee, and they were both home runs. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went with Ricky Six there. And then we had to go back to the drawing board for the third contestant, and we came up with Layla Price. We now, should. We should. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I'm guessing with Layla, that was a situation where when you spoke to her, she probably couldn't get an answer, and that. But you never know until they actually come in and perform on the show. Well, I still believe she was very stupid, but compared to those others, she looked like a rocket scientist. Yeah. But, but Will does a Will does a, not only a pre interview, but Will gives him a test. So Will, you have to test in front of you because he's very upset by this. Tell us some of the questions she got wrong on the initial test that you, um, when you get her on the phone. This is right. Layla who won the Tournament of Champions. Right. This is like the preliminary test just to see how she'd do. She said uh, GM stood for general missions. Uh, o on the periodic table of elements was for optimist. The Cold War was fought between Japan and Russia. There are two Statues of Liberty. <laughs> nine two, right. two statues? Two Statues of Liberty. Uh, and and nine, times nine, nine times nine is 49. So, so, so Will thought she'd be perfect for the game, and then she got here, and she seemed to know more. She, you know, sometimes it is you just hit the right questions. Like, I think it was more that. Than I anything. couldn't believe she pulled Microsoft out of her butt. Yeah. Well, you knew things were going to be a little weird when Brittany nailed the Grand Canyon. I was shocked that she got the Grand Canyon was in Arizona. But that's one of those questions. I think you get lucky. I mean, she lives out yeah. in California. She, you know, maybe she's done drugs out there or something, and had an old escort out there or something. And uh, see, well, I we don't know about that. See, I thought I'm guessing. I'm guessing. See, I thought Brittany's strategy was to guess presidents, which I thought was a pretty good strategy. Actually, every answer was Lincoln, and she got I think one of those right that way. But JFK, I don't think I think there are people on the staff who wouldn't know what the J what JFK stands for. 
for. You agree? I we can read between your lines, Darren. People on the staff mean Sal. No, not just Sal. <laughs> I think other people may not know what JFK's middle Again, name is. Again, I think it's an age thing. You know what I mean? I think that uh, I think if you're 25, you may not know it, but if you're 50, of course you know it. The other gem we added, and I th- I'm guessing this came from the spelling bee, was having the negative scores versus the positive scores. That's the, you love seeing that where they're all competing and they're less than zero. Yes, that was absolutely came from the uh, spelling bee, and it was a great a dimension to the game. The greatest part of the bit was today. At one point, it was minus three, minus three, and zero. Yes, and, yeah, zero, the big leader. <laughs> um, do you think they should know who invented the telephone? Yeah, yeah, I think they should. I think that was one of the harder questions of the questions we asked. Did you? But. Isn't that like a? Isn't that like the, something you get taught like in third or fourth grade? Yes. <laughs> I'm just saying. I like. Like I think it's funny to say like you know I think knowing where the Grand Canyon is is harder for some people than the telephone. Now here's the controversy: when Howard asked where what's venison, you know, I, they heard it as. I'm guessing they heard it as the city of Venice is in where, so that's why she answered. That's not even close to the question that was asked. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> and, and I corrected but, them when they were outside. They were All three of them were being interviewed, and she was saying, that question was unfair because Howard asked, what country is Venice in? I go, he did not say what country. Actually, we How- have it. Ted, hit number, uh, hit number one. We can hear it for ourselves. Let's give an easy one. Yeah. What is Venice in? Let's go to beautiful Layla. What is Venice in? Italy. All right. Italy is... Wrong. It's almost right. Dumb, it's almost... Dumb, dumb. Would you uh, say what you have to say? I'm dumber than a box of rocks. All right, let's get to Brittany. Uh, Brittany, what is venison? California? That is wrong. Dumb, 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 <laughs> All right, let's go to the very beautiful Ricky. Ricky, what is venison? Okay, let me got this one. Go ahead, okay. baby. Go for uh, it. It, it reminded me of the kid who cheats off the dumbest kid in the class. Yeah. Like they were all piggybacking each other's answers. Nobody thought for themselves. And you stand by that question, I'm sure. But when you're making these questions, are you thinking, what would a first grader know? What would a third? Like what level are you talking about of knowledge when you're putting it all together? Yeah, exactly. That first grade. Second, I, I look at it like who would not know this answer? You know what I mean? They're that simple. That and, 95% of the population should know. Uh, Tyler in Massachusetts, you're on the wrap-up show. How you doing, everybody? Hey, Tyler. That bit was awesome. I just wanted to say that, and uh, thank God for porn, or there'd be three more people on unemployment right now. <laughs> those women are dumb shit. I want to make you aware that there are two statues of liberty. You think she knew that? I, she said the answer. You should have given it to her. There are two statues. There's one in France. Well, it's just this was a preliminary quiz, so we'll give her that one. But I, do you think that we would have said, really, where are they? And she would have said, oh, there's one in France and there's one in the... Uh, between I doubt that, and... but she, hey, she got the answer right, man. Come on. Right. Okay. Fair enough, Tyler. I, I I get you. There's always one of those guys. Well, and that's the other one. Technically, there is two statues of liberty. The one we used to get all the time is, um, where is Hitler from? Yeah. And we, the answer is Germany. And then we, I would get the slew of... Uh, well, uh, actually, it, he was born in Austria, so exactly. that answer is not correct. Yeah. Exactly. Shut the fuck up. Well, also, that was on <laughs> that was on Will's preliminary questionnaire. It wasn't used in the game. No, so exactly. let's, let's make that clear yes. as well. But thank you for pointing out that there are two statues of liberty. You never know what you're going to learn on the wrap-up show. Hey, it's Gary Delabate, Baba Booey. On Tuesday's wrap-up show, we had a whole bunch of cast members come in and uh, talk about whether they're well enough known to our audience. So there was Doug Goodstein and Steve Brandano. Uh, a lot of people feeling like uh, Howard doesn't know who they are. There was a lot of wah, wah, wah. Here's what happened. A, a theme that's been going through the show lately with Howard is... Nobody cares about this guy. Nobody cares about you. It happened with the revelations with Steve and Lieberman. It happened to Doug with this whole fine time rap. And I know, we all know what Howard means. It is the Howard Stern show, and we're all superfluous. We get it. But I think some people are really getting hurt by that. And, well, who? And, well, they can speak for themselves. But if you keep being told that you don't matter and you don't count, then you start believing it in a way, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, I, I've always thought that... We have a big show now, so there are a lot of people uh, on what I would call on the periphery, not in terms of their value to the show, but in terms of their uh, uh, their exposure to the audience. When Howard joked about, you know, we're going to do a special on Rob Martin, you know, Rob's our camera guy. We love him. Everybody here knows him. The audience doesn't know him. Mm-hmm. But I think, and I was saying this to the news today, I think Steve Brandano is on the periphery, but in a, I say that in a positive way. Whereas, while he's not a star of the show, I think it's, it's, he's been around long enough that people do know who he is. And one of the things 
I think that listeners enjoy about the show is bring us into the inner circle. Tell us like the you know the little things that are happening. Like John, you and I always talk about our favorite character on a TV show, who's that interesting peripheral character that's yeah. not on all the time. And I think Steve sort of fits that bill. Absolutely, that's what Howard has done for years, and and that's part of the show that I really enjoy. But the difference here is that like using Steve as an example, since he's standing right here. Steve may not be on the Howard Stern show all that much, but he is on the Howard Stern channels quite a bit. Well, does the intern show? He's here on the wrap up show. He does uh, the TV, he, John Hyde's TV. I can never get the name right. Cause the you're right. Show. show. John Hyde's TV <laughs> show and Geek Time. Yeah, and I'm on air on all those too, but uh, it's. And you're, to our audience, you're the guy who's. I mean, I get like a tweet a day about you and the Black Keys. Yeah, no, tell me about <laughs> it. I know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not like hurt by it, but like when you went in there, like we were, and we kind of knew in the back office that you were leading off this game with me. Like everybody was like, oh, "This is not." He's gonna say, "Who gives a fuck about Steve?" But I didn't and think we it was, were all right. I, I didn't think it was a good idea. To I thought it was a repeatedly. Good enough, I thought it was a good. He loved the story, right? I, I it just sucks to me, it sucks for me is that's one of my best stories and if he doesn't care about that then I'm not you know I'm not gonna, you're not going to hear me on the Howard Stern show anytime soon. I let off with what I thought was the strongest story. Howard's was the strongest revelation, but I didn't want to lead off with right. that one. So I worked my way up to it. But I think giving everyone the airtime and I'm guilty of this as well, you end up thinking that your, you know, your exposure is higher than it might be. And I think for a lot of people, not just Steve and I, like the balloon needs to be burst because people think, you know, everybody here them, everybody cares about what they think. The, the only person that people really care about what they think is Howard, and then everyone else kind of falls into place. But I think that's understood. I don't think Steve says, hey, people are as interested in me as they are in Howard. Right. What, what, what he's saying is, and I think what I'm saying too is, of course, it's the Howard Stern Show. Howard's the one that they're interested in. And then there's Robin and Fred, and then there's me, and then it sort of moves its way down. But I, I think that Steve is well enough known to be worth inclusion. Well, I like your revelation, Steve. Thank you. I like John Lieberman's also in the coat room when he was the fraternity president. We're not going to forget about that. That is the dumbest one ever. Well, if John well, can come really down. Well, it's really not. The ones that are coming up are dumber, but that was oh, the dumbest really? one. Oh, there's, there's some that are hysterical. I can't wait to do that, but I see 24-minute Doug Goodstein over there. Doug, did you understand what Howard was trying to tell you? Because it seemed like you kind of got it, but you kind of didn't. Did you understand what I was trying to tell him? Yeah, you were that, saying that, that you fielded a lot of questions for the show. Well, it's ten questions for every show. The, this show, if it, listen, if me talking is probably the same exact length as everyone. We just happened to, every answer I did, I specifically added visual components to it. You but, made, does but that you make said sense? You, but you said so you we opened everyone. it up when I, what, not, but, with every, not with everyone, not if it's like an F. Mary Kill, you know. But I asked you today, did you, I, I think that, I think that you should be doing the show, but I think that it, it, when you see that yours is so much longer I than Rob's. Honestly, when Richie told me it's, uh, or leaving was like, it's the longest one ever, I go, really? How long is it? I had, it's not like something I took a look at. It's just like it is what it is. We make the shows the best they can be. And, uh, you know, in my case, I'm not worthy of, uh, of 24 minutes. It's not like I said, let's make mine the longest. That's an absurd thing. If that's well, what the, uh, the, what people think uh, I did, said I need to be the longest one. It wasn't that at, at all. Maybe Howard's saying it's not so overt. Maybe you didn't go say make mine the longest, but as you're working on yours, you fell in love with yourself and it just got to no, be No, I didn't fall in love with myself at all. I think that's what he's saying. Great. Let him say his opinion. I'm he telling did. him he's wrong. I, I know. And I, I understood and I heard it and he's wrong. <laughs> But if you see the show and you see it's much longer than everybody else's, on the face of I it... I don't look at the time. I look at what, what the best show is. So, yes, yeah, some people were eight minutes. It's because they answered the questions, boom, boom, boom. Maybe they wanted to just get out of there, you know? I answered in detail. I answered honestly. And I answered stuff that's informative to the audience that we hear over and over again. If people didn't want this stuff answered, they wouldn't ask it. It's on our Twitter account on Howard TV. It's questions that Howard gets all the time. It's I, I get on my Twitter. It's questions about why is Howard TV not available on anywhere but cable. It's stuff about the music rights. I answered it honestly and in detail. Why is that a problem? Were you I, offended when Howard said it's the worst thing Howard TV has ever put no, together? he hasn't seen it. Let him watch the whole thing and then comment. And it's going to be the same thing because that's the way the show works and that's good for the air. But, you know, J.D. pitched it to him and he just completely, you know, was completely persuasive. Like, here, check out this horrible, uh, longest, worst, uh, fine time ever. J so, yeah, he skewed it. J.D. You know? didn't really skew it. I got to tell you, it was, it was a... A team effort. When I say that, not our team. I mean, I'm people, not bent out of shape. You don't have to. People you know, were coming you know. from all corners, feeding this rap to us. But I think that we, you probably got into some trouble was when you started giving your background. But that was I answered a question. Yeah, but you picked the questions you answered. 
Yeah, yeah. We well, narrowed down the questions. Some of them are just, you know, some they, questions are horrible, though. But then why include them? I didn't include them. I'm saying I eliminated some questions. These so, are some but, of the but, better ones. I mean, Howard would say, why? Do, do, do everyone gets on. asked. That's the most com probably the most common. What do you do before and what do you want to do after Howard? That's... What's wrong with that? You guys are like, dude, well, I mean... If anybody has seen Doug's <laughs> fine... It. If anybody has seen Doug's fine time and wants to weigh in on this, come on down and speak your mind. Because clearly he's... I mean, he's making a point. I, the point is that it doesn't matter. To me, listen, I'd, I would do one with Teddy. No offense to Teddy, but I think people have questions for Teddy. What does he do? What's his This is the behind-the-scenes show. It's, it's peeling back the curtain and asking people, that is the show. If Howard didn't like the show, then he shouldn't have uh, let me do Fine Time for over a year already. We've done 30 of these. I think Howard. They're interesting. I think Howard likes the show, Doug. They're I just think he was talking about your episode in particular. Because he's, uh, of course, it's always me. It's always me. The target is on my forehead. Do you feel that okay. way? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. in, just in general, and a lot of things. Like I answered one of the questions in the show very sp in specific detail. Um, I went away. I've gone away on three trips in the last three and a half years for Howard TV. I can go on all these trips. And when I go, I don't go to vacation, and that's always the image that gets uh, put on the air. I go and I work, and I could document, and I could show you the tapes that I shot. But when I go, for whatever reason, it's a budget killer, it's wasting time, it's, it's a stupid, what is he doing? But it's nothing that we don't do every single weekend or every single shoot. We're shooting stuff, but when I go, and I think Gary sort of takes some of this too, like, you know, this is what we do. When I put myself into it, it's just like there's a target on my head, and I'm the asshole. And it's been that way for years. I don't really understand it. Do you feel that Doug is a target here, Gary? I don't think Doug is a specific target, but I think he's the focal point of whatever goes wrong on television. So in that sense, yes, but I don't think Doug Goodstein is a target. Versus Ganji? Because Ganji takes a lot of flack, too. And Ganji, but, but too. Doug Ganji is, gets Doug that, is, too. Doug is the, he's the guy in charge. He's the guy. So if, if Howard doesn't like anything on TV, so I think Doug takes a lot of shit because he's the head of TV, not necessarily Howard's out to get Doug. Listen, Howard Howard likes, he, he gets what we do. He, he knows you, he the said. magnitude. No, I know. And then that doesn't need, I don't need the sugarcoating. I, I know how I feel about Howard. I know how he feels about me. I love the guy, and I respect him, and he's, he's a genius. But it's not going to make me... You know, suck up and not go to uh, go at it with them, and, and let my opinion be heard, right, Teddy? Uh, thanks, Gr Greg Carmel. I see you itching over there. I know you're like being in front of the camera. Uh, yes. Would you want to chime in? No, with that's it? exactly why I'm down here. I just want to defend myself because I didn't ask for a news report to be done on me yesterday, and I wonder somewhere deep in the back of Howard's head, does he think? You know, am I lumped in with these guys who he thinks are trying to be quote unquote stars? Well, who are those guys? I mean, you, you can say Benji, you can say, you know, guys that are clamoring for airtime and he gets annoyed with the fact that they're trying to throw themselves, you know, in front of the camera or, in, you know, on, on the radio constantly. So, I mean, do you think, do you think, Gary, I mean, you're a lot closer to Howard than I am. How does he view someone like me, who, uh, like a guy who says, who cares about Greg? And then I think he thinks that the news asked you because they have made, had a slow news day. I don't think he holds you accountable for it. It's the news, news department's job to figure out what should go on and what shouldn't. I'm, I don't even think he's against the idea that they did a news story on you. I think he's more against the idea that it was three minutes long. And it's about something that's so inconsequential. It's like, I think so. Shit, I, I, I mean, I like Greg a lot. I said that to me, that's sort of a, a very benign story that he moved in. If you do something on Greg, yeah. find something much more interesting. But, but I don't department... think, but when you talk about people who are like clamoring for airtime, Greg Carmel is not one of those Absolutely. people. That's Absolutely. all. That, do you think I That's am, what I was clamoring I am, for. I'm not clamoring for airtime I think, at all. I think you enjoy being on the air, but I don't think you look for it. I don't look for it at all. I never have, never will. But that's just not your thing. There are I'm other a behind the scenes. Guy. I'm a producer. I'm a behind the scenes guy. When I go on the air, it's fun, and I'll go with the flow every time. And uh, you know that's what the world we live in. I work in TV and radio, so yeah. But I don't look for it. I'm the most pissed at Robin. You know, it wasn't too long ago that she knew exactly if I had a girlfriend or not. And now she's acting like she has no idea what's going on with me or who I am. So it's funny, Gary. This show real it makes I won't say stars, but it makes everyone who works in it, no matter who you are known and and you're on the air and you feel like you, you have a taste that sort of celebrity and i think people love it but they also feel you know why not more me why can't you know it be me and that's a beast that just it's not going to be fed by howard and it, and it happens in, in certain doses yeah. like you know jd is is howard loves he sounds great on the air he's on all the time other people maybe aren't and wish they were right i think you know howard again of course this is all about howard without howard none of us are here i get it so this is not to be disrespectful speckle in any way shape or form but yeah i mean he's underestimating the audience and their 
want and their desire to hear things about people behind the, behind the scenes. And anyone on the show, I think, I mean, look at the block parties. I was in Atlantic City. Everyone and anyone there was, you know, fans had something to say to them. They wanted to interact. They wanted to I'm ask questions. <laughs> What's that? But, I'm, I'm huge in Tampa. Yes, I but, I mean, it. it's not about, like, you know, uh, we're all trying to be stars. I mean, in my case, it's not the case at all. And I don't think a lot of people are looking to be stars here. They're just It's the world we live in, and, and it's a public forum. So what do you expect? People want to know about everyone. John and Gary, how much do you think people um, listen only because I, I have a feeling that there's a lot of people that only listen to Howard's show versus listening to the 101 stuff. But the people that go to like the block party, like Doug said, are those 101 people. Like, how much do you think that's actually? That's a hard one. To, you know? I know what you're asking. It's very difficult to gauge because Howard. I don't know the answer. If people only listen to Howard's show, then he is certainly right. Like, who gives an f about me or Doug or Greg or whoever? But for 101, it's totally different. So I don't know how big that audience is. Well, it's a hu it's 101, Steve. So Thank let's you. make sure we <laughs> say you. that. I feel You're like right. we're doing group therapy here. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, it's a lot of love. And, I, and I'm guilty of this, too. There's a lot of love me daddy going on, don't you think? Yeah. On Wednesday's wrap-up show, we were treated to an appearance by J.D. Harmeyer. And we got into J.D. and what he does for a living, really, here on the Howard Stern Show. Joel McHale was a guest and talked about what they do on The Soup. Now 14 people are pulling TV clips. But we found out how J.D., who's just one guy, manages to do all that work and then some. Oh, there's J.D. Hey, J.D. Hey, uh, what's up? No, we were just you giving you. Need me? We were just giving you a compliment on uh -huh. uh, when Joe McHale revealed to Howard how well we did call you Hollywood, but when Joe McHale revealed to Howard <laughs> how fourteen people do your yeah, job, Howard I mean, just said something on the air. I, I'm saying, oh, okay. I know I that. That's really impressive. That had to feel good. I know you're looking for that kind of pat right. on the Listen, back. I, I'm not perfect. How I still... is that all right? I mean, he, he said you do the job of 14 people. That You should well, be very proud of that. I, I try. Oh, yes, Gary? I think you do a phenomenal job. Well, thank you. But you don't do the job of 14 people. You do the job of like five people because his show is nothing but Whoa. that. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. No, I'm saying Joel you just McHale. lost nine people. See, see I, I, I told Howard, yeah, I, I wait for the other two to drop. No, no. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, think of it reasonably. His entire show is nothing but clips. I, Ours is supplemented by clips, and, and you do a phenomenal job, and you should have at least four other people helping you. No, uh, but, but he's when a show is only clips, you would expect 14 people doing it. I agree. And uh, they, they they use clips. I try not to use. Uh, back when I first started this job, I was using like a lot of reality show stuff and whatever. And then I read a comment somewhere. I was like, oh, it's, it's just like talk soup. But so I, I generate. I try and do. Di I, I try and do things. Di I try and use stuff differently. I try not to go for reality shows too much unless possible. But for, unless it made you know needed. Fourteen people are going through shows that you can't go through. It's not. It's not the worst thing in the world to use some of those clips. You just don't want to become the same show. Exactly. I try and be different. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to sound. I don't want to be uh, uh, similar or whatever. Can I um, throw you the same question that Howard asked uh, Joel McHale? What's your go-to show? What's your show that you just know you're always going to get a good clip from? Well. <sighs> Uh, back, see, it's changed. My, it's changed now because um, I, I look more towards the internet first because people seem to just post everything and they comment on everything there. So I look to see what people are, are talking about first. And my top two websites are. Well, I don't know if don't, I want to no, give, don't, I don't don't. Like give them away. Don't. But, but what's your, what? Are you, what? Back in the day, what were your top shows that you said? I know I'm getting gold off these shows, Steve. Uh, uh, no, I never used cheaters. Uh, you know, there was, there was some time I used Tyra Banks a few times. Um, Steve? Huh? Steve? Steve. What's Steve? Uh, what was you know who Steve is. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, Steve Wilkos. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, that was more out of enjoyment. Uh, you know, he, he would throw to people. <laughs> throw the chair. Steve Wilkos has a room where he has people, he has chairs on the stage when no one sits down. He doesn't make anyone sit down. You have to earn the right to sit down on the stage. Um, Love that show. By the way, I see that guy in my neighborhood all the time. He's the nicest guy. <laughs> but, uh, well, hey, if you're on, you, you might be able to sit down on the stage. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, it's God. I, I mean, it was the daytime talk shows like The View, and because uh, that was back when Star Jones was still on there, and she was you know talking about her wedding and stuff. I'm trying to think of other you know other. It just it, it varies. I don't know. When you pick something up on TV, do you check like other places to make sure they don't have it? Like it's almost an exclusive to you in the show. Um. No, I mean, you know, funny's funny anywhere. Uh, you know, I, I I definitely I see if I see something on Kimmel or cause I, I I if I watch I, I definitely try and check out the beginning of Kimmel and I haven't, I haven't watched the soup a lot, but I if I do I you know I try and see if I if there's something I miss on there that I think would be good for our show I'll. I'll pull it. Well, as long as we're on this topic, because I don't know how often we're going to get to it. I don't want to be like a fine time. But what you yes. get at what time? Uh, right now, it's like around twelve thirty one in the morning. And what? Are, so, what are the first shows that you go to when you get in? Uh, like I said, I, I check the this. The, I I have about fifty. It's more website right now. Right. I check about fifty websites, and if something like a uh, uh, say Manti Teo, uh, if, if I know that interview happened, I would go to that. Or if I heard, you know, uh, the Alex Jones whenever he was on Pierce Morgan, I would you know make sure to get that done. Um, so you, what's left of broadcast TV for you? Because you say you're getting most of the stuff off the internet, they're doing the work for you. What's left of broadcast TV for you? They say, i got to watch every day or every week. Uh, gotcha. I mean, I record every freaking show, and it, it depends on the guests. Sometimes, you know, there aren't are a whole lot of good guests or interesting guests on, like, Fallon, or, you know, okay. on the talk show. Last question. Yes. Who's your favorite guest that you know is always going to say something stupid whenever they're on a show? Oh, man. Um... God, you know what? Uh, I, I if if so, someone like Mike Tyson, I always try and watch all his appearances, but he hasn't really said anything too too crazy lately. Um, you know, it's just like Paris Hilton for sure. Uh, Paris or Perez? Paris Hilton. Paris. Paris. Paris the chick. Okay. Paris Hilton. <laughs> um, you know, I, it just it just all depends. I don't know. I it's. It's 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 all very varied. <laughs> that, that sounded so dumb, but uh, yeah, I don't know. What would you say? Okay, last question. What would you say is your greatest hidden discovery? Uh, like something you found that nobody else had that we've used on the show for like the longest time. <laughs> well, there's two. Uh, <laughs> one one is the cops taser clip with the guy getting tasered because I love you know I mean that was and that was out of a lark that I pulled that because you know. And then um, you're a big cops fan. Uh, yeah, but they haven't gotten too crazy lately. And uh, I was uh, over. This was sort of when I was still. I just sort of started interning or doing the job as an intern. And it was around. It was on a, a, a 9/11 anniversary. And I was actually. I wasn't even at work. I was uh, at someone's house waiting for a cable guy to come. And I was watching Good Day. This was when Good Day LA was national. So it was like Good Day, you know, right. America. And they were reading letters. <laughs> they were reading. Steve, the guy Steve was reading uh, like an emotional 9/11 anniversary letter. And, and Dorothy <laughs> Lucy comes on before they go to break. He goes, oh, yeah. has to stop before the break. Has to goes. Oh, and Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez <laughs> have broken up. A story we would normally lead with, but on this day. So I just thought that was. I thought one of your greatest moments was because you, he had such a great smile on his face. I think Paris Hilton was on the Jay Leno show where she unveiled her new expression. Oh, I, there she she did that on an award show. But what was the expression again? It was um, uh, that's that's huge. Yeah, that's huge. huge. It, was that's on a, huge. it was on a red carpet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you, you go, Paris Hilton has a new catchphrase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's shit like that. And I wish shit like that would happen more often. But people are so fucking they get they're so handled now. It's annoying. Do you think you do a good job? Uh, I'm really hard on myself, so I'll say no. See, I, d I don't think I'm that... Well, don't just say it. I mean, do you really believe that you don't do a good job? I, d I could do better. I can always do better. I could definitely, you know, I'm sure I could focus. Uh, I, I tend to, to try and, and figure out what's uh, important or, you know, what's good, what I need for the show. Um you know, and some things get lost in the shuffle or, you know, I don't know. I'm just, uh, but, uh, yeah, so I could probably be doing better, 
But uh, that's just me. I, don't know. I think what I, what I got out of that, which I love about you, JD, is th- you could totally get the passion. Yeah, like he just you could tell he d- he totally digs it. Yeah, he works really hard, and he's very. I think he's very good at what he does. Listen, I, I love this show, and I want to be able to contribute uh, in whatever strengths that I have. But I think you also the best lo- way that I can. I think you also love doing that too. I think you like watching TV and finding those funny things. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, I don't uh, sitting and and skimming through shows isn't exactly the greatest thing in the world, especially you know if it's. You know, the daytime show like Katie or something like that, or the talk. Can you watch a TV show without the remote in your hand? Can you just watch a full TV show and not, like, fast forward no. through it? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't think anyone can do that these days, can you? I mean, you're watching a show on, like, uh, you know. Sure. Uh, <laughs> no, I meant not skimming through the commercials. I meant skimming through the show. Oh, oh, uh, if it's like a talk, if I'm at work, no. No, I'm talking about for your pleasure. Oh, for play? I, sometimes I'll skin through it if if I if I don't really care about a show that much. Like what? Uh, I've skinned through some episodes of Girls <laughs> to see if anything interesting happens, like Allison Williams doing something. Well, we know what you're doing. To with girls. Again. So, yes. so you must have loved the week before last, right? I have not watched any. I've only seen the first episode of this season. You're gonna get this episode. You're gonna like it. Really? Yeah. Is this because I'd heard the, the the crazy sex guy is back, and the crazy sex guy. Got her to masturbate in the bathroom, and I thought that was the one. I would. I wish I could make a girl. <laughs> That's one of my dreams is to say something hot enough to a girl that makes her have to fucking stop whatever she's doing and has to go into a bathroom to masturbate. That's what you're. Uh it's, it's one of the few dreams I have in my life. Dream big. Wow, so most dream people, big. I hope I fall in love and have some kids. Uh, you know what? I, they're not, I hope I'm I can make a girl masturbate to love. me. And the no, you haven't given up on love. Come nah, on, whatever. Why do you say that? <laughs> I don't want to get into it. Why? I already said too much. At least a G for a news report. So about what? What do you mean? Just she was asking me what I. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to get into it. What did she say? She asked what I, I was doing for Valentine's Day. And I said, you know, probably nothing. And then, uh, you know, I just revealed certain things that I found out of recent note. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I have no idea what he's talking what, about. What recent things? Have re- I, 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 there was a girl that I was very interested in. Okay. And I found photos of her marriage from a few months ago. Oh, Jesus. So but you knew that, right? No. Oh, you didn't? I'm not, I don't want to get into it. It's oh. a long story. You thought that she was pretty so and it would not make people happy. You're going to celebrate Valentine's Day by looking at pictures of the woman you used to love who now got married? Well, I mean, I can't. Unfortunately, I can't get the images out of my head. So that's a whole other. That's a whole thing. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, he's the best. I know. I feel bad for him. Uh, whatever. You'll find love yeah, or a girl masturbating in the bathroom. To you. <laughs> you couldn't get that uh, Christy Canyon, whatever her name was, to masturbate in the bathroom. Who? Who's the, who's the, who's the, who's the, Kimberly Canyon. <laughs> yeah, uh, I knew it was some one alliterative. Of the, yeah, I was say, one of the ones with the alliteration. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. It's, that was forever. We're ago. pulling for you, man. Abby Elliott, you don't know what you're missing. Adam in Syracuse, you're on the wrap-up show. This is a direct message. Hey, how's it going, guys? How you doing, Adam? Uh, not bad, not bad. Uh, I just want to say, J.D., I mean, you, you are amazing, and that <laughs> I think anybody in the world would want your job, or any Stern fan would want your job, but... But it always amazes me because you were saying about you get in at like one one thirty in the morning. I mean, how the hell do you sleep, dude? Seriously. Uh, look, I, I, I try and um, and uh, and uh, and and I sleep during the day uh, for a few hours, and uh, you know, yeah, I just I it's, you just try and sleep whenever you can. I don't know. It's a vampire esque existence you lead for you know Monday through Wednesday at least. Well, actually, Sunday, if I come in Sunday nights, and then uh, Sunday through Tuesday, I don't know. I think a lot of people work very hard here, but I think... I agree. But I think you're probably the hardest working person here. I really do believe uh, that. I, I'm, I, I don't know. It's hard to say, you know, my job is like hard work, you know, Well, people think you just sit around and watch TV, TV but, there's, and but there's a lot more to it than that. You have the sensibility of what the... Like, there, there's a lot more to it. I guess. I wish I was better at certain other areas... Uh, but you know, here's that's, what I would that's say: a whole other, whatever. Your job is not hard work, but you work really hard at your job. Hard work is pulling tires off a truck. Yes, but you have a job that you take very seriously and you work very hard at. It's something to be proud of and something we all notice. Yeah.
Stern fans, welcome to Find Time, the show where you, the fans, get the opportunity to ask questions and interact with your favorite Stern Show staffers, Wack Packers, and celebrity superfans. I'm your host, Rachel Fine. Now, my guest today is one of the original members of the E! Crew. He started off as an associate producer, and today he is the executive producer here at Howard TV. Now, over the years, Howard has busted his balls over many things, such as being easily hypnotizable and having a little pet name for Robin, a.k.a. Chocolate Cake, for managing an angry drunken dwarf, for having corrective eye surgery, for staying home to protect his family during Hurricane Sandy, and of course, for that infamous on-air scuffle involving baby clothes. He's also extremely loyal to the show. He's an amazing father of two absolutely beautiful children, and he managed to score himself a hot, smoking hot wife. And it's possible that I said the last part to kiss his ass because he is, in fact, my boss. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the one and only Doug Z. Goodstein. Thank you. You, you keep your job. That <laughs> Excellent. Approved. approved. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're I hope welcome. that this all goes smoothly and I don't get fired. We have lots of questions come in. I'm going to jump right into them. My first one is from Elise C. She asks, what did you do before Howard, and has working with Howard been the most enjoyable job of your career? Well, before Howard, I was at ABC News. I wanted to be a, a reporter, believe it or not, and that's the career I was on path to do, but I hated it. I was there for two years. I was working for World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. It was just all hard news. It was all serious. It was all, you know, just real corporate, and I was bored. So um, I started looking for work, and this is where I ended up. I, the E! Show was just in early development, uh, and Scott Einziger, I sent the resume in the mail at that point, and Scott called me, and we talked for a few months, and this is what it turned into. Here I am. So this was a much better fit for you. Yeah, this was a lot better. We well, can go to work and laugh. That's, that's a little bit more productive in my world than, than hard news talking about, you know, crises and wars and politics and so yeah here I am but before I even go further can we please are we in an icebox what I, all I can hear is the air is this some sort of ploy we to... are in the control room the control room is you know we don't notice it as much you know it, it's so loud the air conditioning in here we got to keep the room cold and when the everything is down you hear it it's it's it just it's it's much louder but it's, it's also it's... to make the turkey done for you so. I was gonna say is yeah. this some sort of ploy for the it male is. viewer benefit. Yeah. Thank you for we, that. We I know what guys like, right so now. when if the turkey's done, it's <laughs> we'll just pretend it was uh, accidental. Uh huh. Thank you. Next question from at Killer Bees NYC at Killer Bees NYC asks, "What has been your most frustrating moment working on the show?" Wow, my most frustrating moment. The moment, or just overall? Just overall. Overall. Well, I guess the most frustrating thing around here is the budgets. Uh, and just working that we can't do more mm. um, you know you're restricted and you have to operate by what companies give you and what they set aside to to function and it's always been frustrating to me that I want to do more I feel like we do a lot but I feel like there's so much more we can do and we just restricted a lot of times because we don't have enough staff and budget so even if we had twice the amount I probably would want more then so I think it's a never-ending uh, cycle. Is there one specific moment you were hoping to talk about? Not a general frustration? Uh, the most really frustrating, frustrating thing is... No, that's like that, that encompasses the overall. Question from Eric W. Eric asks, what are you going to do the next time to save your family from the hurricane that did no damage at all to your home? What will you do to protect them from ghosts and aliens? Will you stay home then as well? What's his name, Eric? This is Eric. Eric clearly is a loser, <laughs> clearly has no family, clearly has no life, and clearly has no one he loves. So he could sit in his basement and probably jerk off to gay porn. And um, I have no regrets for that. I would do that again a thousand times the exact same way. There's no question about it. Who wouldn't awful. put their family in front of work? And the biggest thing for me, I said, the morning I woke up, I said, geez, I, I'm going to go to work. But then you start hearing stuff. I, you know, I was frantically watching the news, like, what the, where's the storm? Did it leave? Is it not coming? But you see, it's like right there. It's like an eighth of an inch on the map that it's coming. And then you, I started hearing things about, like, the tunnels might close and the bridges. So I said, you know, if I go in, I might not be able to get home. And if I can't get home, I'm not home for at least two or three days. So I said, you know what? I ain't going in. That's it. Yeah. No regrets on that decision either. Was it hard to sit home and listen to yourself being pulled apart <laughs> on air for it? I mean, it was how, what's fun. that? What's that? It, it was it like? was funny and really frustrating. It was it was really frustrating what he was saying about Gary as well. What is the mechanism by which you are coming in? 
What? What what mechanism will help you to determine when you are coming in? I said, what mechanism? (laughs) (laughs) What mechanism will determine when I'm coming in? Wow. I said, here's the mechanism, Gary. I'm going to get up tomorrow. And, and if the uh, world's still here. If the world's here, I'm going to go over to Sirius and do a radio show. I don't know. Well, that's my mechanism. Yeah, it's it's, it's frustrating because you I, and part of you thinks like, God, is Howard Howard knows the deal. Like, if, if push came to shove, would Howard have done the same thing if he had little kids at home and he wouldn't be able to get back home potentially even in a car or in a limo that someone else was driving? Um, yeah, I mean, it's for the show, but in this case, it he kept going and it became more real, and I get. Got more and more pissed off at it. Doug Goodstein hasn't been here for two days. That is one dude. If I'm ever in a war, that's the Don't one dude. Yeah, I'd rather be against him. <laughs> he has got to be the biggest fucking pussy on two feet. The silver lining on it was that the phones were dead at my house. I was having problems and here because when I tried to call in on Tuesday, I don't know if I'd be here today because I was like, it was like that was 100% real anger, and I was ready to. I didn't care if it was Howard. I was ready to go. Wow. And, you know, a lot of that came out on the next day, but more diplomatically when I had a little time to gather myself and realize, like, I don't want to I don't want to go crazy on Howard. He's the boss. The company was closed. They didn't want anyone coming in. I, you know, went yeah. back and forth to legal and I said, you got I got to get a crew here. So yeah. they were comfortable. The thing they were comfortable with was with the guys in the city. Right. That's what we did. They didn't want people from the outskirts and All the right. suburbs so what, to come who's in. Bo- who's bothering you? You beat the shit out of me with no, falsehoods and bullshit and no, disparaged me for worked. fucking two days. So that's the you truth, okay? Be- no, here's and the then truth. you'd speak out of both sides of your mouth. Like, you I know people got to protect the family, but why the fuck are they here? Did what you protect loser? your what? family? Yeah, I did. Okay, did. I have two did. little kids and a wife at home. On Monday? Well, Monday, yeah, yeah, you know, in hindsight. There was no storm on Monday. In hindsight, Howard, yeah. this, I went by the forecast and was, you know, oh. listening, and it was supposed to hit at 3 o'clock at full force. Yeah. At the like, end of the day, I still love and respect Howard, so uh, <laughs> there would be no good in that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Question from Jimmy K. Jimmy asks, you've been around for years. What is your all-time favorite staff fight? Wow, the favorite staff fight. God, you know. And I'm sure so many people would say the same thing. It has to be when Scott the Engineer lost his shit on Ganji. I would have never let you come if I knew you were going to use the tape. No fucking way, Ganji. Now stay out of my face. Just the anger and his, just the pure emotion and anger and the explosiveness of it was amazing. Get the camera out of here. Scott, you... Out of here! Now! And, um... You know, there's another one connected to that one is when Scott, they claimed he didn't do the push-ups and he lost his shit again in the studio, like a day or two later. And he, you better, you watch on the bet, you watch, you know. I feel bad for Scott. I, I think no, Scott no, worked no, hard. I feel bad for you. Okay, you're okay. you're watching on the bet. Right, no, on. I'm not. I'm not. Come content. on, man. I'm, let's do it. Let's do what? Let's do what? Let's do what? Let's do what? So the Scott overall, Scott fights connected to his push-up challenge. Yeah. Classics. Yes. Patty H. asks, how does it feel when Howard gets mad at you for something, and have you ever wanted to punch him for it? Well, Rachel, <laughs> uh, when whenever you're on the hot seat, you know, you always have to remember you're on. The show is on. You always, you, you know what Howard says off the air and how Howard is off the air. He, it's a show. It's a show. So yeah, Howard's going to take it up a notch. Um, and just go there and just not stop at anything. And the more you show your cards, the more you react to it, and the more emotional and angry you are, the strong you can't win. I mean, Howard's the genius of all geniuses when it comes to fighting and pushing buttons. And you could try to defend yourself, and I, you know, I will. I don't. I won't stop at anything. I'll go after anyone, and uh, if I think I'm right. If I'm wrong, I think I'm one of the clearest and. Uh, clearest people around here to say I'm wrong. People have a hard time admitting it. I will admit it. But have you ever wanted to punch Howard? I wouldn't say I wanted to punch Howard. Did I want to maybe shake him a little bit <laughs> politely and say, Are you kidding me? Like, you know, when he's happened to have gone too far, I feel he's gone too far, or maybe take, maybe he really believes these things as sure. opposed to just doing it for the show. Is there a good example of that? Oh, God, the hurricane thing. I mean, sure, I was sure. furious at him. I, I mean, I, did I want to punch him? No, but did I want to just, like, say, are you are you kidding me? Like, come on, this is a bit now. And but he wouldn't stop, and he just went on so much with Gary and so, and so much detail with Gary that I don't know if he. I mean, that rattled Gary to the core too. I don't know if that was a joke, and so maybe I wanted to shake him a little bit there. It's a little less violent yeah. than Patty wants you to be. No, I would never punch Howard in the face. <laughs> 
What good would come of that? Not a lot. Nothing. Question from at CWB in Tennessee, they ask. Have you been banned from going on the road with Ronnie and taping the block parties since Howard railed you for not doing anything and wasting Howard TV money on the road? This is a, is a very funny question to me. Because, again, things get so polarized when, when I do anything, and I don't know what it is. We are on the road all the time. We, we are on the road. We have crews out all the time. This past weekend, we went, they went to the block party in Pittsburgh and Cleveland. You don't hear anything about it, but Howard knows we shot it. But if I went to that, he would be like, why is Doug on that freaking shoot? Why are you wasting Howard TV money? But it would be no different than anything we always do. Um, in fact, the, the last two times he said something to me, it was I went to Austin about three years ago mm -hmm. with Ronnie. And what did I do? I work. I have a camera. I mean, there's documentation of what I do. I could give you the videotapes and show you how it's edited and show you what, what I'm doing. I'm not going there to, to party. I don't drink that much at all. Um, if I do go away, it's probably because I just need a good sleep. <laughs> I think there's times I go out, or when I do, when I've done shoots, um, these guys go out partying, and I'm like, oh, guys, I got to take a nap. Because, you know, with yeah. two little kids, it's hard. And to have a hotel room by yourself, my goodness. That's uh, so as rare as it gets. And then the second time, most recently, was in Tampa, Florida, where yeah. we went. We worked every second with, of that time. With, yeah. And yeah. again, I'm holding a camera the entire time. I'm running back and forth a quarter mile to get Howard's arrival. I'm, I'm shooting the B-roll of the crowd. I'm coordinating stuff with AGT people. I'm working, working, working. I'm shooting the camera above his studio. So... Again, if it wasn't me, you wouldn't hear a word about it. Oh, great, the Howard TV guys. But Doug goes. It's free vacation. I, I, it's yeah. a, vaca a vacation. We worked 47 we out did. of 48 hours. So. Yeah. You were there for days. No, I wasn't. I, we came in 6.30 a.m. on Monday. You had you, Richie, when, Rachel. Who else was there? Like Fat Angie? Uh, no, uh, Greg Carmel. Greg Carmel, yeah. another one. Howard. I said, I'm sitting there going, I thought we have no money. For the entire expense of that trip, it maybe was $2,500. Right. Okay. Go and ahead. I got a Bubba Cribs out of it, or a Bubba Studio Tour. Okay. Br uh, Brent Fine Time. Okay. Uh, Brent uh, Fine Time or Bubba Fine Time? A Fine Time with Brent and a Fine Time with Bubba. All right. There's three separate e uh, shows, elements. And then we did uh, wraparounds with Bubba. And then the next day, we had three cameras shooting your big arrival at AGT right, in Tampa. Right, right. And then we went to the shows, and then the next morning, at 10 in the morning, we went home. So All right. We weren't, there's no vacationing. I don't know. I think it just really puts it on the map. Like, he doesn't think I work when I'm there, that, I, that I'm looking for vacation time, but not the case. I agree. I can back you on that one. Well, I could show you the tapes. You don't have to back me. <laughs> no, I, I, I lived show it. You my work. We had like a half an hour at night, maybe, for dinner. That right. was it. We worked the whole time. Got a question from Mike S. Mike asks, will Howard TV ever be available anywhere else besides cable? Yeah, this I get all the time on the, and I read them all on Howard TV's um, Twitter account, on my account, which is the first time I'll ever plug it. Doug Z. Goodstein, I don't really believe like a very uh, Howie you know, Mandel you. Yeah, Howie yes. Mandel. Blog, look at me on Twitter. Um, I use that account for, for the purposes of work for the most part and uh, it's the most frequent question and I'm surprised. I've answered it so many times. Yep. I'll answer it every time. This is time. the perfect opportunity for you to set the record straight. Fios well, and okay. internet and pay sites. The, the deal is that in demand Howard TV is owned by three of the biggest cable companies. Comcast, Time Warner and Cox. And they have opened it up to Fios, to unit, uh, Uverse, to Direct, to Dish. The opportunity is there, but they require licensing fees. And there's been complexities with um, getting those contracts done. So, yeah, everyone can have it at this time, but it comes down to money, complex contracts, and it hasn't happened. Do you think there's any chance of it happening? I don't think there's any chance of it happening at this time, but I th it's still active. The door is wide open for anyone to come in and, and carry the service. Okay, so Which people, people who, now people know you can continue. You could wrap it up for me. People who tweet Doug Z good scene all day long, asking why it's not on FiOS. You got your answer. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen. I'm trying to help you it's answer not different happen questions. For now. We'll, we'll, it, for now, it can happen. It could happen tomorrow. Maybe someone, someday. If someone writes a big check, let's they start can, a kick, have, can we start like a Kickstarter account to get it? This yeah, is, this is, they can have it. FiOS, they can all have it. They just have to to pay a guaranteed fee. All right, so if someone campaigns yeah. to Fios's headquarters... Yeah, if a million people go down there and write a, and a dollar each, maybe... More effective than tweeting you. Well, I don't mind it. Keep tweeting. <laughs> I, I will answer them. But it's, it's nice amazing. There's like sometimes 20, 30 in a day or two, and yeah. I'm like, I just answered that 10 times. Here's another one you get asked a lot. Oh, boy. Sammy Y asks, every time you air a Stump the Booey on Howard TV, you always edit the questions and music out. Why? 
That is a good question as well, and that's a very simple answer. People don't realize they think, oh, you can just you know, you can just use anyone's music. Music and songs have what's called publishers, and publishers have exclusive rights to that, and they need to give you the rights. The radio show has different sets of rules and contracts and agreements, and they do pay royalties. We can't. We can, but those royalties we can't afford them. So, for example, one song could cost a quarter million dollars if we want. To, I mean, or could, the average would be ten, fifteen, twenty, fifty thousand. But again, the way we work, it's not like a one-time airing. We run on the channel for three weeks, and then the terms that Howard and Don, with the ownership of these this footage for forever, they own it. Um, no one would ever give us those in perpetuity rights, and that's really what it comes down to. Lately, though, more and more artists are are publishing themselves, mm. so you're seeing more and more performances on Howard TV, and that's the reason because they own the publishing, they understand it. There's not a tangled web of uh, people who are looking to make money. They understand the power of Howard, and we can put it on. Awesome. Sometimes it's restricted. It's like Lady Gaga gave us a year on her song, uh, and sometimes it's forever. So. Now you know. Rachel Fine, if we want to use her music, we have you rights have. in perpetuity. You, I came right? in and recorded a song just so that it could be played and, during And you published yeah, it yourself. Because it was mine, I owned That's it. That's right. R.E.R. asks, what was it like working with Hank the Angry Drunken Dwarf, and why have you never managed other Whack Packers? Well, Ari, who has happened to be a friend of mine. Ari, what's Ari R? Yeah, R. that's a friend of mine. Um, He's always wanted to ask you this. He yeah, just never had well, the courage. I remember, I didn't manage Hank by my proactive measures. Hank came to me, um, he befriended me when he first started coming on the show and he asked me after he was getting calls at his house about gigs and he would hang up the phone and tell people to fuck off because <laughs> he thought they were phony phone calls. He's like, people want me to go to a bar and drink and I said, and so he called me and said, I think there, could you call this person back? And that's how it started. And then it was, he became so popular after that, I think it was the 1998 or 1999, or 1998, I think it was, um, the most beautiful person in the world contest mm -hmm. by People Magazine, and the phone just didn't stop. So I said, hey, "Yeah, I'll entertain this." I had no idea it was going to turn into like such a long, uh, such longevity with it, but I did it, and it was fun. And uh, I have no interest in managing. I had no interest in managing Hank. It just worked out, and I became friends with Hank, and I really saw the person that he was. And he was a great guy and great family, and and it, just a good dude. And I wanted to help him out. Go have sex with Jesus Christ, you <laughs> faggot. <laughs> Jeff the Drunk wanted me to manage him, I think, at one point. I think a bunch of them at some point have said, could you manage me, could you manage me? It was never about me wanting to be a manager of the <laughs> whack bag. That's not a career goal for me. <laughs> Fair enough. A question from Ad Zuba. Zuba asks, I know you are involved in a lot of shoots. What was your most memorable shoot for the show outside of the studio? Whoa. Let's see. An over, like a big production or a shoot? A you tell shoot. me. What's your favorite memory? Wow, favorite memory. Memories. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna let oh, you set the rule. So You're my boss, funny. so you can. You know, I would say the one shoot that I really just think about and laugh all the time, and had so much fun doing it was I did hundreds of shoots with Stuttering John. We went out all the time in the heyday of John doing his thing, and when we interviewed at this event, um, one of the Apollo 13 astronauts, James Lovell. And I think the question was, have you ever, did you ever run up a batch in the, in the astronaut suit? Some, some goofy question, did you ever fart in, did you ever fart in the suit, in the space suit? But John and I just caught, John caught a case of the giggles and he couldn't stop, then I caught it, and then the other report, there were reporters around and they started laughing, and everyone was just laughing hysterically, like tears crying. Would it make you nervous to be in space with a homosexual a a astronaut? <laughs> That is kind of a strange question, you know that? How, how was it the first time you had to go to the bathroom in, in your spacesuit? Yeah, is this camera live here? <laughs> Did they ever have you masturbate in space? <laughs> no, 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 hey, hey, wait a second. Uh, where are we anyway? Is uh, this supposed to be an award program? Yeah, this is this is, this you, is fun. Uh, this stern, is fun. Are you starting in here in New York? Is this... oh, what? oh, did you know that? <laughs> would you ask me? Uh, ask me some serious questions. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. And James Lovell was like in another world. He it was like deer in the headlights. He had no idea what was going on. And it was the probably my favorite shoot because it was so funny. We just laughed for, for days. And I still laugh when I think about it. And when I see it, I just lose it. It's and Now you'll get to see it right here. Did you ever run off a batch in, in the capsule? <laughs> We're not answering those questions. Which astronaut had the biggest sex organ? <laughs> I'm sorry. 
<laughs> this guy's laughing, I'm sorry. I'm not laughing. All right. Uh, and then also, God, just one, because I've done probably a thousand plus shoots over the many, many, many years around here. Um, Benji stuff. Benji, I don't know if it's at the Benji at the Scream Fest. <laughs> Or Benji at the Poetry Slam. Probably at the Poetry Slam. That was funny because it was just I, I was I I got taken into another world with Benji, mm -hmm. where he started uh, to, wanted to fight me. <laughs> it's about common sense and decency. Shut Thank up. you. I am covering what he does. I didn't tell him what the fuck to do. He grabs him. Right. We know I don't that. have to do anything for this guy. Oh, 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 does he have a gun to your head? Oh, my God. But overall, the big picture, I love doing the Vegas shows. Not, no individual one, just anything on the road. I thought that just took the show to another level. There was tons of work, but it was fun. Those are my favorites. Awesome. Favorites. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not you, a single memory. Memories. Uh, it's your show. So, uh, Doug, right. you can say it. My boss could do whatever he wants. I want to thank Doug Z. Goodstein. What, what is the Z? We didn't even talk about this. The Z is Zachary. Okay. Which I wish was my first name, actually. Why don't you go with the Fred Norris method and just um, make your name Zachary? I probably could, but it's a little too late now. Okay. So I'm, you, I think you feel I'm committed too, to just the initial? Yeah, I'm too into it. I'm deep into it now. So I figured I'd just use the initial. <laughs> Wanna, and also, there's yes. a double G in there, Doug Goodstein. Doug Goodstein. So it breaks it up. But I don't introduce Goodstein. myself like, "Hi, I'm Doug Z Goodstein." I, I just, like I just like, I like the Z. It's very, uh, it's, all right. Well, fantastic. It's very what? Gonna, it's got a nice Doug Goodstein. It's got a nice little rhythmic factor little, to it. I, you kind of you blow it with the Z. I think I would go uh, Zless. Okay. That's just all me. Right. I go I'll Z Zless. Go you go topless. I'll go Zless. Deal. I want to thank Mr. Z Goodstein for taking the time to answer the questions that you, the fans, submitted. Keep sending your questions in. You can tweet them. You can Facebook them. You can. Send them via email. You can send a video submission and be a part of the show. And remember, this is your show, so don't screw it up. Until next time, I'm Rachel Fine, and I hope you all had a fine time. I had a fine time. I had a you. fine time. It's a fine time. Did you dress conservatively for me? Is it? I'm the boss. And that's why you turned the air conditioning up? Is that the deal? Yeah, Press? we did that. In what planet Although, is this conservative? The turkey wasn't done, though. The turkey is done. I'm sorry. Let's not, let's not discuss the turkey's <laughs> level of readiness. But, um, it's all done. Yeah, you, I've seen you, like, with your, the, your hey, well, This is, like, a nice, you know like, the time earth I, tone. And for you, I put time into choosing skanky shirts for you on a weekly basis. I, I really thought this was a new, you a boob window. Conservative. A boob window for you. Neck no. is covered, sleeves. I mean, geez. Okay, Richie's in the room. Let's let's relax. Just for you, Mr. Good. Thank you. Be good for you. Trái tim yêu để vững lối đi qua điều chăn chờ đưa em đến nơi tận cùng nỗi nhớ cùng hoa thân như gió mong mây kề đem nồng nàn dâng cuồn hết đam mê màu sao tất bao bồn bề lo lắng cùng đắm đuôi bù lúc xa thầm lặng buồn nóng cho khoảnh khắc yêu thương tình chúng ta sân vút tựa cánh rêu như lúc nhỏ thấy 
I didn't bring it up. It's like arguing with a plant. <laughs> There's no arguing with him. His thought process is so paranoid. You know, whenever we do the psychological test, Ronnie's almost like a mass murderer. What, what, what did they say about him? Well, they always say he's paranoid. Paranoid, and it's just weird, his whole thought. Like, like what did John do? Talk to his girlfriend? Yeah, it, it seemed to me like to not be a big deal. Like, they had a discussion. Oh, I guarantee you, Ronnie went home and started one of his freaky thought processes with that girlfriend. Well, I think there was probably... Somebody got a talking to last night, is yeah. my guess. And it wasn't pleasant. If it's lu- if he's l- if she's lucky, Ronnie was so rude to her that she'll leave him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring it up. I didn't she bring brought, it up either. We brought, were chatting. It yeah, comes chatting. up. Yeah. <laughs> you made it pretty clear how you wanted to fuck her a long time ago anyway when you were drunk, so... Let's let's get that clear. What? Let's get that on, on, on out on the table. I mean, you want to go there? We'll go there. <laughs> go, go there. there. Go. Where are we going? <laughs> that's a that's an expression Ronnie heard. I forget who used to say, "You want to go there? We'll go there." But all this is like what Ronnie hears guys saying. Yeah, it's almost now that I'm listening to it, it is like talking to the Godfather. Yeah, yeah. That's a big wrap up show thing, by the way. You want to go down that road? You yeah. want to go down that road? Yeah, and yeah. no one ever does. Right. Like, no, it's clear. I mean, it was clear. It's not clear. Yeah, okay. It's very clear, but okay. I can't be friendly with your girlfriend? No, I didn't say that. There's nothing wrong and with it. And I've been nothing but nice to your girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Correct? Yeah, sure. No, correct. Correct. Tell the group. Sure. No, yeah, you want to go there? Tell the group. I'm telling you. I've helped her with some opportunities. I've right. been very nice to yeah. her. And it's not because I want to sleep with her. Okay. All right. But Whatever you say. Cl- clip four is the one to go with. He's, uh, this is where Ronnie really lets him have it. This is where they go there? Well, you know, Ronnie, well, Ronnie calls him a bunch of names. Oh. You're so infatuated with me and what's going on with my life, I guess, that you have to know what's yeah, going on. I'm infatuated on, you know? with you. I'm making yeah, you small, talk with, small talk with your girlfriend. No, I'm I'm small- don't make small talk with uh, Ronnie or his girlfriend. Because Ronnie will misconstrue it. I know that about Ron. I love him, but he's, I know how to handle him. It's like, <laughs> Obviously, it's like, John Lieberman doesn't. No, no one really. You got to really spend time with Ronnie to know how to handle him. Talking about me behind my. No, that's not being a reporter when you're out at a social event or, or in a restaurant. Small talking? Or, or a restaurant for me. You're not a fucking reporter. But obviously, now I do know that you are a fucking reporter all the time, and I will not talk to you about certain things. Did you cross a line here, John? Absolutely not. My point about saying a, I'm a reporter is. You're, you're a fucking is pussy. That we were- you're a fucking pussy by doing that. Okay? You break man code by doing shit like that. By talking You're like to a your woman. girlfriend I at told, an event? Dude. Oh, my God. Jeez, How long did that, that go voice. on? Oh, a, that voice. A, a bit of time. A bit of time. Yeah. Why doesn't he calm down at that block party? I mean, he gets on the air. Don't put him on the air today and tomorrow. I mean, listen to that voice. Well, we were saying everybody went to the block party. Right. And he's the one who came back sounding like that. But oh, every weekend. Shuli said, Shuli said that, and I give Ronnie credit for this, because what is he, 60-something years old? Right. Shuli says he has endless energy. Yeah. And he, he says he just goes and never stops. Retard strength. And he just never stops. Yeah, but so, his voice does. <laughs> so did he go home and yell at his girlfriend? I don't know. Ronnie, you out here? Downstairs. Might be doing something. Yeah, avoiding you. Avoiding me. Ron, real quick, did you beat your girlfriend when you got home? You see, what? Wait, wait a second. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I didn't beat my girlfriend. No? No. Everything all right on that front? Yeah. I found out Lieberman was, like, trying to get to my fucking head, supposedly. So you had to talk with her? No, I asked her what happened. Right. And she said she never, re- never really said any of that shit to him, that he was fucking just trying to get to me. But, you know. And he did. He wants to be a washwoman. It's okay with me. How did you discipline her? I didn't. 
Stop it. I love he's the calm Ronnie. Calm Ronnie. No, I, I didn't. I like you were all worked up. <laughs> what did Lieberman do wrong? He spoke to her. He spoke and... to her and she said that Ronnie's tired. <laughs> yeah, and it, that uh, she needs a younger guy. You know? Here, here's Lieberman. Yeah. Lieberman, I, I, Lieberman I always said dude, he was speculating I don't, I don't about the younger you, okay? guy. What is that? I'm done with him. I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> oh my He's an God. asshole. He really is what, an asshole. John, what did you do? I what? Mean, what he did what he did yesterday is the stupidest thing ever. Did he trying, break the trying to get trying to get to me like that, but telling me lies like that. What it's lies like, did I tell you? She never said that, dude. She said on the air yesterday that no, she, she said that when she called in. No, she didn't. She didn't say that she said I was I was tired. Yes, she absolutely and that she wanted did. A younger, a younger man, you fucking idiot. The younger man thing I was joking You're a about. You're idiot. Go play with your own girlfriend. Don't worry about mine, okay? You're well, don't call me a liar. I'm not a liar. a liar. And, you are and a fucking liar. don't call me any and more names. I don't appreciate liar. you on the wrap-up show I don't personally attacking me. That's right. Too bad, man. Don't attack me. How did I attack you? And you have you walk. You're even, blaming me out, for your dude, girlfriend. I go, I go Howard, out to dinner with this thing. guy. Oh, I go out. To, wait a minute. But, but I, go out, I go out to dinner with this fucking asshole. Yeah. And he's telling me how he's he's can putting information together. He's a reporter, twenty four seven. What? That's what he tells me. Ronnie, right? yeah. Ronnie, you're not smart enough to understand what I actually you're said. Fucking, I know you exactly take what, what I say you said, and you misconstrue no, it. No, I know exactly what you said. Okay, Howard, I'm, I'm not going to have I'm this gathering, argument with Ronnie because I'm it doesn't... gathering information. That's what you told me. Here's... That's my job. He's making it like I filled out the form and said I wanted no. to sleep with Stephanie. He's angry. You're channeling no, your angry. anger toward me. Your off. girlfriend I'm filled out... I'm your girlfriend you filled out the said, form. You fucking You're... lying, motherfucker. That's See, what I'm angry at. I don't call you names, do I'll I? I'll call you whatever I feel like fucking calling you. Oh, you me. will? Yeah, I will. You what will not. What do you do about it? What are you going to do about it? Oh, now you're threatening me? No, I asked you what you're going to do about you it. You act like you're a two-year-old. You're a fucking idiot. Oh, I am? Yeah. How am I? How is he an I'll idiot? Put, wait, you shit. think I'm an idiot? Yeah, I do. What right do you have to call I me an idiot? I can say whatever the fuck I want. Oh, like you can? can? Just like you can. I have never once All called right? you a name, Ronnie. Well, I have never once criticized don't talk your you. intelligence. It's true. It's true. Stay the fuck away He's been very, very cordial. I will talk to you in the course of my job. You're calling him names. You talk to me in the course of my job? I said, job? I said, I will talk to you Go, in at, the course of my job. At a fucking restaurant, that's your fucking job? That's not what we're talking no, about, Ronnie. We are you said do not speak to you, and I said I have to speak to you in the course of my job. không cửa buồn tình qua khu vườn vắng em làm mấy cuộn cuộn qua đời anh giang giang sông trôi qua đồng bằng mưa mịt mùng bên mộng em làm hoa dấu lặng bài nhạc tình mênh mông thầm chẳng nói trôi qua đồng bằng mưa mịt mùng bên mộng em làm hoa dấu lặng bài nhạc tình I want rings around you any day of the week okay Ronnie okay. can you fuck better than him you think yeah any day right. I'll fuck his girlfriend she'll be standing her fucking hair will be standing up. Oh, that's <laughs> nice about the hair that's on, right you uh, about, if you want to be an asshole I can be an asshole too you talk about the hair on her arms okay Want to have a fuck contest? You want to be an asshole? I'll be an asshole. Ronnie, the difference is... 
There is no difference. You step way over the line. Yeah, I And now you're talking about sleeping with my girlfriend? I never once said... How about a fuck contest? Seriously. <laughs> sure. Okay. Good. Big shot. You fuck Stephanie. Bring it out. He'll fuck your girlfriend and see who fucks better. Then we're going to be back in here with a whole new... Well, let the girls decide. With a whole new problem. Let the girls yeah, decide who fucks better. Ronnie's confident in his fucking. One thing yeah, but know. Ronnie's never going to touch Stephanie again after he's been with John. She's been with John. No, you can't take it out on Stephanie because you're going to fuck his girlfriend. That's fine with me. Good. You're sure you can handle I, this? I would not subject my girlfriend to that torture. You guys going to wear condoms for this? I would, I would <laughs> no, suggest no, no condoms. No, no condoms. Absolutely I'm riding bareback. None. Oh, my God. None. <laughs> I'm going in commando. That's right. Oh. Well, you, John, uh, Ronnie yeah. says he's up for it. I'm not up for it, no. Not do it? <laughs> no, this is the most r ludicrous thing I've ever heard. Especially because yesterday he's calling me a wash woman. I mean, this is the thing. Ronnie can't argue rationally, so he resorts to just name calling. So right. yesterday he called well, me idiot, wash woman, this that and that. That shows limited uh, arguing abilities. Right. Limited uh, intelligence, I right. would say. Uh, okay. Right. Lim well, no, you me, don't John. have to call him names. Don't fucking hang out with me. Don't talk to me. Stay away from me. Okay, if I'm saying okay. Feel, I'm an idiot to you? That's fine. I did... Fuck you and the whole fucking deal. Wow. What deal? What does that mean? What, what deal? deal? That's what cryptic. Deal? What deal? He walks away after saying. You talk about the fuck contest is off. No. <laughs> He'll be back. <laughs> is there anything you want to say, John? Now that you uh, are alone. <laughs> I think he just said it all. I think you see what we're dealing with. God bless you for dealing with him for the past thirty well, years. Well, make a point. You did kind of uh, say that uh, Stephanie said he was tired. He says Stephanie did. But that is true, and she said it when she called in yesterday. Right. The whole Howard. It was all based on all how right, much. Right. When you look traveling. just quick, quickly, when you look at it rationally, right. she started going to these block parties with him right. to spend more time with him because she was never seeing him, and that was the whole which basis. Is beautiful. He which is a good from, thing, and he right. took it. Yeah. All she said to me was, "I love Ronnie, but I'm not seeing him enough." Boom, boom, boom. That's all I said. And you and said, it, hey, he should spend more time with her. That's all I said. Right. And now he's but talking he never, about... never, ever, ever said that she said she wanted a younger man. It was always implied. She wants Ronnie. Clearly she wants Ronnie. What else, why else would she be so with him? Why is he him? so upset? That's my... Uh, she, he's upset because she wrote my name on that piece of paper. <laughs> and right. at the moment that she put that pen to that paper, his life changed forever. Oh, right. dear. <laughs> well, you know, this game is a very it's, scary game. It's what? a tough one. I guess she's attracted to you because you are a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Ronnie needs to listen more. Maybe I'll go give Ronnie some tips. <laughs> I'm sure that'll I'm sure that'll go over well in the hallway. I'm gonna go give Ronnie some listening tips. Let me ask you something, John. You and Ronnie get into these things all the time, yet obviously you're friends outside of here and you go to dinner together. You know, it's very strange, Robin. Actually, our relationship has been deteriorating lately because in the hallway, <laughs> really, in the hallway, I'll say good morning to him, just uh -huh. a cordial good morning, right. and he'll grunt. He or does he'll, that with everyone. He, and he, or, he gets into a shtick. Uh, yeah, it's like the minute he comes into this compound, he's like another man. He might as well shed his suit jacket and have a Superman on his, his chest or I something. I think that's his personality. Uh, oh. Because outside of here, I really like him. Yeah. And he's nice, and we have, we've had nice conversations. But in here, he is like a monster. Well, the game, if anyone's keeping score, the game is uh, who, would, who would my woman have sex with? The game is one for one in fucking up relationships. So it's a good game, <laughs> right, Robin? It's a very good game. Absolutely. Fireworks every right. time the game is played. John, uh, good for you. Uh, playing the game well. Ronnie, can your relationship with Lieberman be restored? Where are you going? Ronnie, where are you going, man? Uh-oh. Oh, oh there's Jason. What's the latest update? Ronnie just grabbed his coat and left. He left? What? Well, I left the compound. And there's <laughs> no guests about? today, so I don't. he didn't go downstairs to help anyone up or He's anything. He's got to do security. I don't know where he went. I was like, where are you going? And he just... Wow. Mm. <laughs> and we have <laughs> a bit in about 10 minutes. he get hot under the collar? Wow. Well, all right. He got hot under the collar. <laughs> Over nothing. <laughs> I'm not sure what they're fighting about. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the spelling game, see if he can spell Lieberman. <laughs> all right. All right, John. Well, I hope Ronnie's all right. Uh, he's <clears throat> fine, because nothing really happened. <laughs> yes. Am I good? John, the lines around here often get 
very, very blurry mm -hmm. between reporter, friend, co-worker. Do you think Ronnie's confusing all these aspects? I just think, and I mean this, he is a different guy when he's in this compound. And when we're out of the compound, I thought we were friends outside of here. I really did. I thought we were friends or friendly. But lately, he's been a monster to deal with in here. And now he's calling me a liar. And he resorts to these personal attacks. I've never once attacked him personally. And so, yeah, things get blurred around here. And this time, though, it seems like it's gone too far. It's like I... I don't have the I don't have the energy to deal with this kind of bullshit. I really don't, Greg. Why are you attacking Lieberman in this situation? What's what's really irking you? What do you mean? Uh, what aspect of it? Because it seems it seems you made like up lies, okay, to get to me, okay. That's why. Can your relationship but, with John be repaired? No, I'm done with it. You don't need friends like him. I really don't care if you talk. I talk to him. I don't talk to him. I really don't give a shit. No. He's all about work, obviously, he says so. Because when I, when I confronted him about, you know, do you work 24-7? We you know, when you go out to dinner with me, obviously, the conversations that you have with people, you know, are all news all the time, I guess, you know, so. The microphone is never turned off, no. in your opinion. He's gathering information. That was his answer to me. That's, that's not a friend. I'm sorry. Robin, I hold in my hand an envelope, and this envelope contains, I don't know, about 10 envelopes. Ronnie went crazy. John Lieberman and Ronnie not talking to each other. Did Ronnie ever return to the compound, or is he still missing? Is he still MIA? I, you know, I ran in here. I didn't see him come back yet. Wow. He's back. He's back? Where'd you go, Ron? Went to get my phone. What? Went to get my phone out of the car. Oh. I thought, like, John really got to you. <laughs> All right. Ronnie and John went at it after this game yesterday. I, I don't know if I can. If we'll see the same fireworks. No, I think most of the people will have more of a sense of humor than Ronnie. All right, I'm holding in my hand the envelope. Let's see who it is. dòng bao la một màu xanh biếc cho ta say lòng lắng nghe sông vỗ di dâm như lời du thua ta nằm trong nỗi ngắm nhìn mấy lượn lờ trôi bồng bềnh là lướt như thời đôi mươi nắng vàng như miệng ai cười cho hoa đua đó cho người thêm xuân ngắm màu xanh thẫm núi ngàn chung chung điệp điệp dòng bao la một màu xanh biếc cho ta say lòng lắng nghe sông vỗ di dâm như lời du thua ta nằm trong nỗi Oh no will? yeah will oh my goodness she dreams of fucking will yeah uh, i have to say whole time will's my bro if she was gonna fuck somebody i'd be i'd be proud for it to be will yeah awesome. wow what do you think of that man you're you're, 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 you're in the game bro you're in the game i'll tap that ass <laughs> i'll give it to her have sounds a like party you're, sounds like you're ready to tap any ass that walks or walks around pretty much that's you true. got the married man syndrome man oh uh, we both that's do. Right. yeah, yeah well, we've been we been married at the block party uh this weekend you know, Will and I went up on stage, and for they, you know, they told us ten minutes beforehand go up on stage and say something. Right. So I just went up and talked about every woman here that I want to have sex with. Like, who do you want to have sex? <laughs> with? Oh my god, every Teddy's girlfriend and our.